Today's sponsors are Angelo's Interiors, specialising in kitchens, bedrooms and bathrooms. Go and visit their showroom today in Gillingham. Their web address is angelosinteriors.com and Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. Welcome to the Cherry Wood Podcast with me, Rachel Burridge. And the master of podcasts, Simon Burridge. <laughs> Get the clap aboard, you say who you are, give it a clap, and then we're away. Give it the clap. We're here. Yeah. What's your name? Chris Harden. Says it here. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Put it out. Put it back there. Put it out. <laughs> and this is someone that's supposed to be good with his hands. Oh dear. Precision is key. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Cherrywood Podcast. This is Why pre- are you talking in that really? <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the uh, Cherrywood wow. Podcast. Wow. This is Chris Harding. Hello, Chris. Thank you. Very nice to be here. <laughs> You're very nervous, aren't you? I, I do feel a bit nervous, actually. Now, Chris Because I'm concerned about what you're going to say. He's a magician. And I think I drew a little wand on your name and all, I think. Didn't you I? did? Yeah. Which you never oh use. Oh, <laughs> Do you know I sometimes do use a wand? Oh, do you really? Yeah. Now again, now and again. Let's not go there yet. Oh, here we go. You know nothing about the podcast because apparently... I didn't want to be influenced by it beforehand. I wanted to be surprised. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yeah, I said that I wanted to not be aware of any questions. You might do stock questions, yeah. We don't have stock uh, questions, really. Yeah, we just make up as we go. We don't have stock questions. So <laughs> right. That falls off the wall. Okay. And if you are if you get the time nearest than anyone else this year, you will get £100 <laughs> to a charity of your choice. A charity? Yeah. Okay. What do I, are we You're tight? gutted when I said charity, <laughs> wouldn't you? £100. £100. <laughs> Yes, well, hello. Can't have to drive. Cancel two gigs. <laughs> <laughs> Do we say the time? Do you mean the time since we started or the time Flat. it is? You, cl- oh, oh, you say a time, it's going to go 10 minutes from now. Okay. All right. So you do whatever you want to do. How long do you think it will last from uh, now? From when you clap your hands? Oh, you want me to guess now? Yes. <laughs> uh, I've already had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Should have got I'm exhausted. Down, yeah. <laughs> I am physically exhausted and mentally exhausted. Um, <clears throat> ten minutes from you're gonna clap or oh right from now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Did you say ten minutes? Because I said ten minutes. Yeah, I think I was influenced. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't know. What was that noise? That's me fiddling. Sorry, oh, that's me. Oh, right. Sorry. It went straight through my mic. Sorry, he's got... For people just listening... The um, The cue ball is next to the black. No, for people just listening, he's... Um, he plays with cards a lot. I think he has to uh, because he's a magician. And he did a little... <laughs> like he did. I did. It was a fun sound. I didn't, don't mean he was... He wasn't clearing his throat. He was... Um, Doing that with the cards, which is going to be annoying to you guys throughout the whole um, episode. I might put them down in a minute. You build like a house of cards with them. Can yeah, I do, do often. Yeah, so I've, if I've got nothing else to do and I feel like <laughs> life is it slipping away, <laughs> if there's no televised snooker on, I build a house of cards. <laughs> <laughs> what a question! You might as well go. What is your favourite colour? <laughs> do you know David Copperfield? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Chris, we've known you for a while now, haven't we? Yeah. How long is it? I, I thought you were called. We got to know you the year before we won our first award, which was um, yeah. 2014. Did sort of mentioned the award straight away there, didn't yeah. you? So, oh, what a link. Straight, straight <laughs> Every straight time it's like mentioned the award. You get it up and <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it then? Um, I then met we... you at a wedding fair. You came over. At, no, not a wedding fair. I think it was at a wedding. I want to say it was at the Orangery. And you came over and said, I'm Simon, I'm doing some filming today. Can I film you? <laughs> And it was sort of, I thought, who is this guy? And this is free. Yeah. Can I film you? Is he part of the wedding? This is some fucking geezer. Um, and you came over and, yeah, I think, I think it was there. Because for a long time, I thought you were called Cherrywood Promotions. Everyone thinks a cherry tree production. Yep. The reason it's cherry wood, that was the road I lived on. Which is coincidental because I used to live in Cherrywood Rise as well oh, when right, I met okay. you. I used to live in, in Ashford. So you can tell the difference in class. Cherrywood Rise, mm. mine was Cherrywood Close. Oh, Cherrywood Drive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Different Cherrywoods for different yeah. Yeah. types of people. <laughs> different standards. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> I know what you're saying. Who is this idiot? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've been a, you've been a magician. Like, about, about, you've been a magician. Easy for you to say. <laughs> you've been a magician. I'll do that again. For your whole life, haven't you? Yeah, have I've, you ever I, had another job before that? No, I have no other skills. No, I yeah, I was. I th- I think I was one of those kids. I got to like five years old, realised I didn't like playing outside. I wasn't good at sport, so I became uh, magic was the, the sort of the thing that the 
kids do or the kid the cool kids this is pre-internet though as well so it's before the youtube generation <laughs> <laughs> five or six you know i think i think it's probably yeah because i'm well, i'm old, a bit younger than you aren't i so <laughs> like, oh my god we just been talking about 80s it. early 90s He's 38 everyone oh, that's right. 38. yeah yeah that's all right. It's all right. like, a, yeah. yeah. She <laughs> would. If you say six, if you say six, definitely not. <laughs> Forty-two out. <laughs> what about fifty, Rach? Nah, sorry, fifty's the cut off. Okay. <laughs> You're fifty this, this year. Yeah. I remember being like young, and you think about people of fifty as being like well old, but you don't seem well old. That's anyway, so. I have a mental age of about sixteen. Now. Well, I met you. I couldn't place an age on you, so I think it's because you've got a slightly flathead, childlike. <laughs> approach to things I have juvenile is the word what's the point in being straight and what <laughs> being straight <laughs> what's the point in it's just turning into therapy isn't it it's I, like always a... I always burp in this podcast I'm so sorry <laughs> um, what's the point in um, being serious in life when you can just have a laugh for your life well, you can I still see. get on you still work you still have fun yeah but what's um... especially what you do I suppose especially what you both do if you take yourself too seriously in it then you're kind of setting yourself up for a bit of a fall aren't mm. you you know, because mm. I mean, that's a lot of brides and grooms actually say to us, Oh, it was so chilled out when it was just us guys, and you, you made us laugh, you made us relax. Is that, is that, is that yeah, is that inferring they've met other wedding videographers that aren't making them laugh? And mm, I'm not well, saying that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they, their, ex, their experience is when they were kids at weddings, you know. Do you know, like, I get that aunt's yeah. wedding and stuff, and they, they see a photographer going, Right, all you move, you get all close together, and they don't experience the one to one with photographer or videographer when they're at when yep. another wedding. Mm. Yeah, so they're not, but I get so that. They're not used to the intimate side of it. Yeah, it's lack of familiarity because I, I mean, we've done lots of wedding fairs together. I mean, I get the thing sometimes people, but you'll get <laughs> it's normally they're opening line, it's normally like a mother. If the bride or groom comes up and goes, I hate magicians. <laughs> Why are you stopping <laughs> Thank you That's so an opening gambit. I hate magicians. I hate magic. Great. Do you so want to see a couple see of tricks, you know? <laughs> Cheers. Uh, you're really feeling really on a high. And standing in front of like a banner with all of my face full of magic. She's just going to hate everything about this. But, you know. I've got the brochure in my hand. Show me why it's this much. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't bought. Oh, okay. I'm surprised he hasn't bought the Katy Perry picture with it. Yeah, there we, we go. Can put that there we go. We can well. put it on the wall for you. Because well, <laughs> usually behind you, wherever you walk, is yeah, a Katy. <laughs> I think you wear some sort of harness with the, that picture behind you. Right. Like, okay. Behind you with so you Katy Perry. It's interesting. So that was a that was a gig. It was the same year as the um, the wedding awards, and I remember doing that gig, and I thought. There was no photos there because it was like a private party. I thought if I don't get like a photo, no one's going to believe. No one's going to believe it, are they? Mm. And um, so is it a private party for Katy Perry? Because I'm going to keep mentioning her yes. name because I'll get a lot of hits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless we start singing the songs, and then I get like a copyright. <laughs> yeah, so, lawsuit. Now. That's Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. Um, it was at a Ooh. venue in London called the House of Magic, um, run by a good friend of mine, the magician uh, Simon Drake, and he. I used to work there all the time and he phoned me up a week before and said he just had a call from my sister and they were coming over to do the X Factor. They wanted to do a private party there, just them, only about 15 people um, and did I want to go and do it and um, and we did and I did and it was great and she was really lovely. She was exactly what everyone that is like a fan of her wanted to be because sometimes you sort of come across famous people and they're a bit of a... Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I find the lower down the rung they are on the fame ladder, the worse they are. You know, right. the very, very nice or the very, very... The people that are, I suppose, work very, very hard. You don't become a successful skate paper by not working very, very hard and having a certain amount of talent as well. So the people that are at that level are generally very nice. But mm. it's the people that kind of come through perhaps... I don't want to kind of be derogatory, like reality TV shows and that tend to be a little bit... I don't know if they're there. It's like, why haven't you recognised me? I like nothing better than kind of pretend yeah. I don't know who they are. Because I yeah. often don't know who they are. It's, it's probably the bitterness of not getting to the success that they want to be at, I imagine. Yeah, I guess or so. Or some of them think that's how you've got to be if you're really Well, it's also successful. fame. It's, it's fame, without, t fame yeah. without talent, isn't it? It's fame mm. without anything. It's fame mm. just for being oh, yeah. mouthy or, yeah. you know, I don't know, very open to kind of filming any aspect of your personal life, mm. which mm. is, you know, it's, we'll watch it. Well, I imagine you yeah. watch it. I don't watch it. I don't, don't, I watch, know, you it. don't. don't watch it. Stand. No. No offence to anyone out mm. there that wants to, no, but I mean, we've, we've been to weddings before where they are like... Oh, yeah, like the Towie people or that like, love yeah, on yeah. yeah. And like people are like, oh my God, it's Sam. We're looking at each other like, like... Really? I don't know I who don't these know people, who 
And it's not even funny and because you say, oh, what's your name? And they think you're taking the piss. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm genuinely I, not. I, I really don't know, know who I don't, they are. I'm not just not bothered by it. You know, no. it's fair play to them. They've earned a living from from that. Mm. It doesn't bother me. It's just not, it don't interest me. I just always mm. wonder about that kind of thing, the game plan of the longevity of it. You know, I mean, we talk about it in our industry. Like, where do you Panto. go with it? Pantomime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Panto. I, you, um, I like Panto. I think Panto is incredibly difficult to do. I mean, well, we I don't. Do, th- I think it'd be tiring. To we go to the Panto near you, but it's um, at the Marlow. Yes, Marlow. The be. best Panto. Yeah, it's ever. good, isn't oh, it? Yeah. That Ben guy. The best Panto. So ben good. Roddy. Yes, he's so, so good. Funny. He's very good, isn't he? Yeah. So I've been funny. to. I've been to it a few times. And Michael to... Wong. Is it Michael Wong? He does the music. Yeah. The, the music. Bloke. Oh, I don't know that, that mm. intimately. He's the guy, the conductor up the top. Okay. You're not down the bottom, the conductor. They're not normally the orchestra bit down no, the front. No, no, he does it from the, the top left. Oh, really? Mm, okay. I think it's Michael Wong. I'm sure I've got that mm. right. Sorry if it's not Mr. Wong. <laughs> Sorry I've got it wrong, Wong. <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 he's not going to go there. He did go there. <laughs> Sorry. He did go there. <laughs> Do you know what? I would go to the pantomime in London the last couple of years. Um, and the amount of work that goes into a good pantomime is... I think it's quite hard. I think yeah. it, I mean there's a lot of magic yeah, in pantomimes as well. There's, a lot, there's quite a lot of special effects with the effect with the um, introduction of LED screens and oh, um, lights and stuff like that. They're amazing now. Yeah? They really are, and they're so comic. Some of them are so funny, so funny. But we always get tickets for the one they, for the one in Canterbury, like right near the hand? front. And then it, obviously do this they, guy. Do you go up. Yeah. So you have been to a panto at the Marlow, haven't you? you yeah. Are you bullshit? Yeah, we have the bench and that he does the ghost oh, bench and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a hand at the start, isn't there? Picks one dad. Because it, yeah, that, oh, yes, that guy, yeah. the, the dame, what's yeah. his name? Yeah, Ben. Ben. Yeah. He gets a boyfriend for the pantomime, doesn't right. he? Every Is time. Is it always you? No, no, but they try and get seats <laughs> so we, right, right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, what? So one I'm of these crapping you? myself for the first, I don't know, Do you? 20 hour. minutes. Do you always hour. take the camera along just in case, get some content? <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we always sit you next to my dad, don't we? We're yeah. like, no, you two yeah. go in first. And they're like, literally, really <laughs> resistant. Like yeah, that the, the wedding awards. Is that your parents that came that time? Yes, we that was. Together? Yeah. That was yeah. the year we won. I think yeah. he was with us when we won. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I think you flirted with my mum. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah you flirted yeah, with, with my mum. That's a very charming lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not like you to be a flirt. <laughs> <It's not laughs> to, I, well, sorry, sorry, his wife. He did not. He's only a nice flirt. He's that not, feels, yeah. Not hands. <laughs> Incriminating. His hands, <laughs> his hands are on the cards. <laughs> hands on else. the cards at all. That's why I've got them. Otherwise, I'll be touched. It's like they have an elastic band on your wrist. How is that trial going? <laughs> anyway, let's talk. Go back to famous people. I yeah. know, I know for a fact. Yeah, you've done a number of famous people, but one you told me about. I'm not sure if you're allowed to mention because I don't know if you told me in confidence. What? Or not. Who? Well, you brought it up now, and now I don't know. I don't think it's yeah, anyone in confidence. Think... I'm not allowed to mention, is there? Kate Bush. No, Kate Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was at her house. Yeah, it was again. It was a really small party at her house, and that was like no, don't take photos and that because she's very private anyway. And I think also there's a. There's sort of a fine line as well. If you're in someone's house, it feels a bit invasive as yeah. well. Mm. And she's obviously incredibly private. And it was only about, yeah, about 15 adults, a few children, and some was very young at the time. And it was a, it was a really idyllic oh, right. party. So it was just like a normal Yeah, like a party. little gathering kind of thing that they do. And they, um, that was through um, Simon. Because Simon did all the effects for her tour years ago when, they, um, when she toured that one tour. But it used to be, I think, the day before Christmas Eve or something. They did it every year. And it was really like a really quintessential. I mean, the house was like, beautiful like just very festive very warm and then the kids it would start snowing outside and santa would come up the oh garden and the kids. it was so amazing like really i was doing, doing there doing tricks <laughs> she's from bromley i believe i don't know ken i think her family's from kent well bexley the... maybe it's bexley she's yeah. from but lovely again like really really just nice down yeah. to earth charming it's like a cup of tea that's and the word do you know yeah. what i didn't appreciate her when i was a kid as much as i appreciate her on a now, really. Which should be, there's Which a new is, wave at the moment, isn't it, with the Stranger yeah. Things uh, sort of music yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but if you could, if you ever track down the um, tour of life, I think it's it was on YouTube for a while. The whole show, which has mm. got all the effects in it, and Simon's in it, doing all these different characters and all this sort of stage magic, and that it's an incredible show. Oh, right, so he's, he's on there as a magician. Oh, it's an amazing show. Yeah, it, it's an amazing, amazing show. I think it was, I want to say, late seventies, early eighties. I think. What, the, but, the performance? Yeah, the show, because it was the only show oh, she right. ever did and they filmed it once and it was, I think it was at the Hammersmith Odeon and it's it's an incredible show, you know, when you look at just the performance and that of it and um, just from an artistic point of view, it's, it's quite something, yeah, so it is worth looking at if you can find it, if you're, you know, a music fan. So just for YouTube and search purposes, that's Kate Bush. 
<laughs> of, of Stranger Things. <laughs> no, because, because Tilly's... I've got this list here. How many other things have worked through here? <laughs> what else have we mentioned? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because Tilly's into it because of Stranger Things. Yeah. So she's now like the new generation. Doesn't she it? dance as well, your daughter? She yeah. dances with gymnastics as well. So she'd appreciate it. I mean, yeah. Kate Bush would be extremely yeah. oh, we've kind showed, of like, we've shown her the video yeah, and showed artists. her, what it's was a, it, Kate Bush Day. Yeah, no. <laughs> and you forget how young she was when she was doing She was yeah. like 70, 17, I think. It's, 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 it's amazing. Sorry, Weathering Heights. Weathering Heights, yeah. She was 17. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Has she still got the range? Because she did perform at about four years ago, didn't she? She went back out again. Yeah, I don't know. And everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? That That's the the good example of someone that's got this incredible sort of talent, but has also kind of managed to find that split between personal life and performing yeah. life, mm. you know, cause that's the thing. If you look at kind of reality shows and that now it's all about like, doesn't matter how good you are. It's what's the story behind it. You know, what got you to this mm. and that kind of thing. So if you, you're on there doing, I don't know, singing, whatever you do, dance, magic, whatever it may be. It's like, that's great. But it doesn't matter how long you've done it. What, what's the, what, what's the message? What's yeah. going to connect with people? Yeah. It's, it seems at the moment it's not, good enough just to have a very good act you need to have a very backstory. good backstory mm, yeah. yeah behind yeah. it you know this mm. is my last chance at this or this is my you know this is going on in my family i want to do this because of mm. this and it's mm. i sort of see the logic behind it but it's almost become mm. a bit formulaic now mm. um like anything that goes through phases when it becomes regular when x factor pop idol whatever it was first came along that was like revolution we loved it oh yeah and now it's a bit like we always know it's going to be the same thing it's very they headhunt quite a lot of the act i don't think that's a, a secret that's always been no. the way but I don't, I don't think, think they do it now, do they? they that? do well, that's why Rage Against the Machine. I don't know. That's Is why people yeah. started getting Rage Against the Machine in for the Christmas number one. Yeah. Because which it, I love. I used to play that, Killing in the Name of. Mm. Yeah, because it's like, let's try just and knock to, it off. Just try yeah. and knock it off. Well, it was a factory, yeah. wasn't it? It was the last one was knocking the next <clears> one. Then two years later, you don't remember what happened to Sam. It was Steve Brookenstein. What happened over. to him? Yeah. Where is he now? Yeah. I mean, you know. But it's always the second place people that do well, like Ollie Murs, One Direction. Yeah, why is that? You know, it's always the ones Come second. That... <laughs> Come second. It's always going to, you know, I, there's another show I don't really watch. I used to watch it, I imagine. But, well, there's a brilliant but magician. There's always, you're always going to get some diamonds no, in a, the rough, you know. There's a really good magician, a British magician who's Piff the magic dragon who did america's got talent and his whole thing was it looked like he was going to win it and he deliberately didn't want to win it. he wanted to come second because right. the second gives you the the platform that the show gives without the commitment afterwards of being ah, attached to that course. show oh, right. but he's okay. you know i mean he's a bit it was a close-up magician in, in this country for years and then went off and did that and he's incredible and very very good very very funny is that someone at the door Sorry. Rachel. <laughs> who's that gonna, do you do walk-ins here that's what no, is that someone just, at home do you want, have I got to go? No, nah, leave it. Leave Is that it. someone at your house? Yeah. <laughs> so we've been broken into. Are we not at your house? <laughs> Sorry if we're killing the magic for anyone. We're not in Cherrywood Studios. We're in Cherrywood Studios. Yeah, I didn't have that house. Where are we? Are we in Rochester? We're in Strew, which is just over the bridge from Rochester. So we're still in Medway. Yeah. When we put our postcode in, it says Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. Well, let's get back to you anyway. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what else should we talk about? I was going to say something. What was I going to say until Rachel's phone with the ring right, mobile? I'm sorry, but once, interrupted us. once in all these podcasts we've done it, my phone's gone off. Once. I don't remember my phone ever going off. Yeah, and it's the ring doorbell, which is the sort of thing in a public place when it goes off, everyone looks at <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, everyone. Everyone's like, oh, it's my Everyone. <laughs> Please right. leave the package outside. <laughs> so you had a, a, would we say a year off, Chris? What be magic? Uh, yeah, I, t- I took a step back from kind of actively promoting and doing sort of wedding fairs. And I think after the the COVID times and that, there was a lot of catch up work, and I did lots and lots of weddings. And it was about it marked about twenty years I've been doing it professionally because oh. I did it straight out of school. I literally I remember the day I left school, finished A did left school, had a gap year, and then the, I think two days after the last day, I went on a I got in the car, drove down to Wales, and was on a boat from Wales to Ireland for six weeks doing magic. So I worked on a boat. So, I mean, if I'm working, sometimes people go, you worked on a boat? They think a cruise boat, but this was a crossing boat where people are, <laughs> they are not interested in seeing magic. So you have to work very hard. And to you did that after? Straight, you... straight away when I went to left school. Oh, oh right. Left school, right. Okay. Yeah, straight away left school and was there for six weeks and then came back, started doing some, um, a few gigs here and there. Um, I think I'd, I'd won the, the, the magic circle was like a young magician's kind of element of it. And I won the competition that, there. You were into Phantom yeah. as well, weren't you? And you, wasn't you dressed a bit Phantom of the Opera? No, that wasn't that. No, that wasn't that costume. No, that wasn't that. That was, um, <laughs> that was something I did afterwards. Life. That was, uh, <laughs> no, that was, um, that was. Because we both love Phantom. Do you remember? God. We both had this sort of yes. coming together. Yeah, over, over Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> well, no, no, that, so no. It was uh, text messages of love it was yes. for each other. We literally, <laughs> so, like, quoting yeah, lyrics we, back We're literally coming on, coming on to each other. <laughs> 
I think I even sent him a, a clip of me singing it, didn't I? Possibly. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. If I can't remember it, it's obviously because I've tried to blank it out. But <laughs> yeah, I would do that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Magic Circle thing was at a close-up competition. I'd done that when I in my last year of school, and then I kind of went off, did this boat, and then started doing a few little kind of gigs when I came back. And the year gap became went, so I never went to university, which I was going to go to have my place. And I was what were you going to study? Uh, psychology and law, Oxford right. Brooks. Um, but I remember sort of coming home and saying to my, I think it was my mum, Said, look, I don't think I'm, someone at the door. Just carry on. Don't I said that. to her, um, I don't think, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going to go to university. I'm going to be a magician. And she said, oh, that sounds lovely. Um, and I thought, oh, gosh, that feels like a... Is that there the time? Is that 10 minutes? That might, not, that might not be far off. Can I just sort of make a comment there that the doorbell going off seems to coincide with that. Has she just gone out there and pressed the button to make the fault <laughs> to save that? That is the first time it's ever happened. 100 quid. The first time it's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> we have someone well I'll mention this nearly every podcast we have someone within two seconds away from when it fell off really mm. who was that uh, uh, she's getting a lot of press this lady okay Jenny Lynchfield and oh, she's a, a toastmaster she's celebrant. a toastmaster yeah, yeah celebrant and she was uh, I said last time when Rachel's replacement is here Kelly I said she was a Buddha <laughs> she went no she's not she's a Buddhist <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh artist. dear, a Buddha. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you. I don't know. That might not be far off. Ten no, minutes. I don't think so. I think we've been talking for long. Okay, minutes. fair enough. That's probably twenty minutes. What time do we start? I have no I idea. Know. That's why I don't know. We don't. Want, we don't want to say times because it destroys the. It sort of the time does. Of, yeah, because no one knows when we filmed. It's the mystery. There's of no it. windows in here either, are there? So this could be but there's like a dungeon. window behind that curtain. <laughs> I, I might start up. introducing people between those curtains. I was going to say, yeah, it could come out from behind like it. wrestling. So we give them wrestling entrance. <laughs> you sort of start and then you open it up yeah. and maybe they're standing there. Pyrotechnics, sort of, yeah. smoke. Or like half-dressed. Like Get wrapping with his bubble machine. And smoke yeah, machine. <laughs> Do people still have bubble machines? Is that a thing? Um, I've used a smoke machine in here. Why? For a scene. Okay. I played, what scene are you doing in here with a smoke? Is I that where you're dressing up as Phantom <clears> and sort of walking out? Like, I, I played a character <laughs> once and it was my flat. I played this character that collected urine in a right. comedy. Okay. I was, and, I was good that you emphasized it was a comedy. Yeah, it was a comedy. <laughs> Not like a kind of a and documentary or drama. He had a party in here. He had a party and it was a strange old party. I think I've seen it. I think you sent the clip I to me. I think I did, did send it to yeah. you. Yeah, I had gold shirt on, yeah. usual gold shirt on. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah, gold Silver shirt pants, silver hot pants <laughs> and moon boots. It's very hard. It's very you do. difficult to disconnect you from those characters once you've seen you mm. doing it. Mm. It's very hard to disconnect. I'm, You're very much a method actor. Yeah, method actor, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I've got loads of urine in all sorts of places. Now. Just walking. I wonder what the smell was. That's what's behind the red curtain, isn't it? Just piss bottles. <laughs> anyway, wait, who was at the door? Go on the I don't know. All oh, right, well done. They well done. Thank oh, there's no one. <laughs> he reckons you've gone out there, pushed a button, and it's knocked the sign off. Did you know the sign fell off? Yes, when oh, I right, came okay. in, I heard it. <laughs> Okie doke, right. Sorry, where are we again? We do drift off. I do apologise. I can't remember. I sort of lost interest five minutes in, but... No, I'm joking. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> At least he's honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not really. Um, what were we talking about? Um, so you did your crossing. Yes, yeah, so I did, I did magic started. all the time. Yeah, and done it yeah. ever since. So yeah, and I took a year. Yeah, I, well, I didn't take... I took about... I took... Yeah, about a year out of just sort of actively doing wedding fairs and kind of promotion and that because I thought 20 years I was getting a bit slightly burnt out, I guess. And I think there's always a danger that I think... With especially with close up magic, every time you go to a group of people, it has to be like the first time and, and very fresh and very enthusiastic. Mm. And I think if ever you get to the point where you feel like you're kind of a bit not phoning in, I think it was just that volume of work post COVID. And I thought, do you know, I just need to take a step back and just see and also assess like where you're going with it because mm. your aspiration when you start is I want to do so many gigs a month, you know, I want to do mm. 20, 30 gigs every month and that. And then you get to that point and you go, What's right, where does it go next? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, where do you just repeat, repeat, repeat? Or how do you sustain your energy? So you take a step back and that, and then just kind of... Um, reevaluate. Reevaluate it, it yeah. yeah. And now that I'm, again, I'm like, I feel like I'm like a, you know, that same enthusiasm of 20 years. Because it's mm. all, I think with anything, it's always about like the, it's cliche, isn't it? To say it's not the, the destination, it's the journey. Or something. It's that climb towards it. You're kind of always inspired. So like the wedding fair thing is like, you know, you go and do it because you're trying to get the gigs and you want to kind of get busy and that. And it's quite exciting to to kind of, I don't know, you come back to it and people think, oh, where have you been? Mm. Have you been anywhere? I've, I've still mm. been, I think probably because I dipped out of the wedding scene a little bit yeah. rather mm, than yeah. anything, which is where a lot of my kind of people that I know very well are in. But I think it's healthy to kind of have a mixture. Mm. Um, I think I probably dipped into the wedding you scene also a too helped, much. Sorry, you also helped your wife who's got a couple of cosmetics. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So Charmaine's, Charmaine's business, the salons and that. Um, 
very much. You've got two salons now? Two salons, mm. one in Ashford, just outside of Ashford, and one in Tenterden. What are they called? Uh, Bo Boutique. Mm. Salon, Bo Boutique. Bo Boutique. Um, and they're really good. I mean, you know, and that, that was just more of a kind of being the very geeky guy in the background. I do know, I'm not like, I'm not dip my hand into sort of like offering <laughs> I know you. I know you're having your. Yeah. I know you're having Botox. Yeah. But do you want to see this card trick? Coming in, going, yeah, what, what's going on here? No, that was very. Did yeah. you used to do tricks for them? Something? No, I mean I've done. I've done. Of course, I sort of do when they do their kind of their open evenings and things like that. I'm there doing stuff, but it's really kind of the nerdy, businessy stuff behind the scenes, right. the accounts and stuff like that that I was doing. Just because, again, it's it's always healthy. I think when it, you know when you do any kind of work for yourself to look at different avenues, like you do the weddings, you do this, you do other things, you do studio shoots and that. So. We sort of look at that as a business. It's very different to being a solo performer because the days now of of being a performer, maybe having I don't know, maybe a little agency. We have ten or fifteen people on your books. It's, it's mm. sort of gone because everyone's got an iPhone, everyone's got contact. Mm. It's not like you can go to someone. Well, I'm not free, but I can send you this person. They go, who's their name? And they tap them in, get them. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's the thing. So yeah. you look at that as another business because it's a business that's perhaps more scalable. Sorry, am I boring? It's actually that. just told me that I'm interviewing you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like, oh, good because he's boring me so much I forgot yeah. who it was <laughs> time to stand <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, yeah so we sort of spent some time on that and, and actually I suppose it ties into having always done this since I left school you never really realise what you're kind of missing somehow and having that time just to, to sort of structure and reevaluate how you split family time so two young mm. children as well you don't want to always be the one that when they grow up they go Never really saw. Nah, yeah, I'm exactly the same. You know, because exactly predominantly same. this work is weekends, yeah. evenings, yes. and, and things like that. And yeah. my daughter's 11 now, and she's starting to get kind of to the point where they're less. You know, they kind of find their own thing and they want Eleven. time to themselves. Oh, is she 11? She's 11, yeah. Oh, I can't believe that. And my little boy's five, so he's still kind of young. Now. And I think you want to find that balance. So yeah. there's a few magicians, uh, sort of outside of Ken London, based that are older than me, but I kind of do it very well and they seem to have found that really good split where they've got a very good career in magic and, and kind of work corporate work and weddings and all those kind of things but they've also got very good family life as well because mm. there's plenty mm. that are very successful but it's just them and their missus or they're by themselves yeah, yeah. or yeah. they've got very weird family lives and I think you want to find the right mm. way to do it we're exactly mm. the same as you which is why we yeah. just we don't just do weddings because no. we don't no. want to be well, every weekend no I you think know. you've got to find that that yeah. split and like tonight I mean I'm working I'm doing a, tonight like a, a birthday like a private party thing a 50th birthday which is always a good crowd up in it's not far from here like Be Be Bexley or something like that good evening thing and it's a, a really nice big party and it means like tomorrow you could be off spend the day with the kids yeah have family night because we used to have like you know through the covid we were like doing like friday night family film mm. night you know disney plus was out it was cheap you know all sit down like, so, so you're going home and then back to bexley yeah oh my god mm. Some Americans listen to this and they're going to be thinking, oh, that must be hundreds and hundreds of miles. <laughs> but to us, it's enough to pay me off. Yeah, no, it's it's enough to piss me off. Like we're 40, talking about 70 miles, I suppose. 40 we? minutes here and then half, back <laughs> up again. It's <laughs> like they go shopping that distance. Well, that was the thing. And you know, that's something that, that I find as, as you sort of get older and that, you know, like when I was younger, I'd be very, if I was doing a gig in the evening, I'd want to be at home where I couldn't think about anything else. Yeah. I was just thinking mm. about that. But now I think, well, I come here go back we pick up the kids we have dinner and then you go yeah. out and do the gig in the evening you kind of find that but you sort of grow into that a little yeah. bit and I think yeah. it's um, it's important to find that because what you don't want to do is get to kind of like 50, 60 and think yeah I've had a great career but at the cost of because they're only young for a short Absolutely. period of time mm -hmm. um, children and I mean it's people always ask are you doing tricks at home all the time for, for kids and, and not really Mm. The people, oh, you must be brilliant I must be so funny at home and there's so much magic at home all the time no um <laughs> Because it feels a bit like, I think it would get on their nerves. I mean, I practice things on the kids sometimes yeah. and they kind of, you know, might feign some interest or I mean, the lockdown, I taught my daughter some tricks there to do some stuff for school and that and we, we filmed in that for, for that. But again, you kind of want to find that thing where it doesn't, you've got to also have like your family time as well. Mm. But I'm, you know, if we're watching a film, I'm, they, you know, I'm, I'm always fiddling and noodling, I think they call it. You know, you've always got a deck of cards in your hand. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I don't Yeah. Are you? Are your kids interested in Must magic? be hard in bed. <laughs> I bet the missus has got loads of paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking a serious question then. Are you just coming back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what do I think of that? <laughs> so it's not that disgusting. <laughs> Um, you've got something to say to him no I was just saying are the kids interested in magic do you think they yeah, would you think follow they would take you it on? I don't know I, I don't know maybe I think 
I suppose it's like anyone that does something that they're, they're really into, you, you never want to feel like you're pushing it on them. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, you know, they, 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 they feign interest in stuff. They might pick stuff up and, and, and piss around with it, but it's not something that, no, I can't, I can't say they're massively into it at the moment, but mm. I think it's a really different way now. You know, they've got tablets, they've got access to so much information. They've got more toys than I've had when I was a kid. So I think they've kind of find different things to be interested yeah. in. They'll find their own thing as well. My daughter's very creative and she's very um, into art. She's super organized and that kind of thing. My son's just into everything at the moment. And oh, just cars. Kind of, yeah. Is it typical boy sort of yeah. mud yeah, worms? Mud, yeah. yeah, rugby football, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then things I don't understand. Minecraft, what are you writing a note I've, on this? I've for? got questions for you, but I always forget them. So I'm writing them down. Preparation is <laughs> key. Yeah. <laughs> No, just as I speak to you, I remembered other stuff that we're connected with. Oh, what else are we connected with? The Tab Theory. The Tab Theory, which was your sitcom that came yeah. out. Yeah, you gave me a lot of input on that. Last year. <clears throat> it wasn't. Do you know it was 21? Was it, but, but was it in the COVID time? Because you did like a we launch shot, party. We shot it in COVID. Yeah, we filmed it. You come and, and did the magic for us. When was that? After it? 2021. Mm. Yeah, there was a lady there, actually. I think she was the, the wife of one of the people in it. And she said, I said to her, I'm doing some magic. She said, I hate magic. <laughs> and I did <laughs> some magic for her. And she said, oh, I quite like you. And I think, yeah. do you know, that's interesting. Because I think <clears throat> if you're coming up against people that are like that, you go, well, well why? Why do, people, why do people not like magic? Not, that's what's moving me on to it. It's not just the magic. It's your personality as well. But well, no, no one's actually going to say to us... I hate videographers, are they? I don't, so it's yeah. a bit no, personal. they are. I, I hate being filmed. I, I, hate I, being filmed. I remember but, a guy, there was a guy that did wedding uh, photo booths <clears> and <throat> I remember him really well and I, God, I can't remember his name now and they just did photo booths and it was down at the Grasshopper at Western and the lady came around, I was next to him at this wedding fair. Grasshopper. And a girl came around and he, <laughs> he said, this woman came and she, he put her in it, you know, and, and did it, all the photos and that was really big and up to and she had all the photos that came out. He says, the picture, what do you think? She said, I hate having my photo taken <laughs> And it was like, why what? are you doing this? Yeah. And I think, well, what is it you don't like? Is there anything wrong? And that's the same thing with people going, I don't like magic. You sort of have to drill in, well, what is it people don't like? Yeah. Is it, it can't be, you know, Matt, is, is there something deeper on that? You know, is it that are they, there's nothing to be scared of? I don't think there are many performers that go down the route of kind of I that think, kind of mystique and real. I just think and that it weirdness. freaks them out. It freaks them out where I, I, I think it's amazing, mm. but I know. It's you know, a trick. It's a, yeah, and the I word think, trick is there. What is you know? it? What is it that people don't like about it, or is it? But I think I can only kind of think that people have had either a, a negative experience mm. or something in the past. But it's like if you see a um, or seen something bad that they didn't like. So if you go to a pub and there's a rubbish singer or a pub book singer and they're crap, they don't never book a singer again. Mm. They just book a different singer. Yeah. If a place books a magician and the magician's rubbish or it doesn't go down well, they don't, they don't they book don't a magician again. They go, "We're not having a magician." Yeah. We've yeah. tried that, it doesn't work. Yeah, and you yeah. know, well, well, why? Because everyone's so varied. And mm. there's, when we do like the bigger wedding shows, and there's multiple magicians there, and then people go, oh, there's a few of you there. But everyone's so different. Mm. And I think, well, that's the thing. See, I think that's why we connect with, oh, I've used the word connect, which annoys me slightly. Should we hashtag it's collab? Like collab. I, hate, I, I hate journey. We connect with you journey. quite well because you've got a very similar personality to us. Where you've got the, you're the, the piss taking magician. You know? Well, let's not. Well, I'm trying to use that. Is as that a your tagline? Tag uh, I think you should be called the piss take. You have a laugh with the people you're doing. I think you just so don't I've take yourself some, too seriously. I've seen some very nervous magicians. They mm. they're nervous with the crowd. They're very good at what they do, but they're nervous around the crowd. Well, you're not. You just have a laugh with them. Do you know what I think that comes down to? Is it, it's it's that real fine line with magic where if you take it very seriously or you're putting across in a way that you're trying to portray that you've got some kind of skill or power in your so ability yes. there is always that element if something goes right isn't someone going to go wasn't it just like a trick or something or if it, mm. you know if, if they catch you or something goes wrong or you drop a card or something people will go ah and then the whole illusion around it shattered whereas if you don't go in with that approach exactly. then there's no nerves of mm. that and it's I have filmed you where it's gone wrong. I have filmed yeah. you where a cup's gone over and and the large fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already there. Yeah. Too early. <laughs> but but it still looked like magic. It mm. looked like you meant to, the way you did it. Looked like you so, were meant to do so it. So there's the, a really really good magician. Mm. It, it, there's a good theory out there. There's an American magician, probably the best close up magician in the world, and he talks about this the idea of we think we know what people want to see we think we want to go out there and they want them to be fooled and we want them to be, they want to be fooled and they want to be wild they don't they want to people especially british but they want to catch you out and they were like you know if you go up to them and you're very smooth and you're like hello you know good evening yeah. and you're very suave and out there ladies and gentlemen all this they'll go the guy will think he's peacocking for my wife i don't like him he's smarmy <laughs> i'm going to try and catch this guy i'm going to be me. if you go up there and you're a little bit 
awkward or you're kind of chatty and, and a bit yeah. fun or friendly yeah. Yeah. they'll feel a bit comfortable and you kind of i mean i did this thing for a long time where i sort of used to wear a suit with a waistcoat that didn't match and people thought is it a fashion statement it wasn't it was deliberately there's I think if there's something slightly off about you, they go, I can handle it. There's nothing wrong, yes, but I can they it. feel like I can, I can handle this guy. I feel like you yeah. can, you know. Because we used to take the piss out of your suits all the time, didn't Absolutely, we? yeah. Wait, which we is another confidence building. Used to, every time I went to a shop yeah. with a dodgy suit in, like a Doctor, <laughs> a Doctor Who type suit, I would send you it when I would send you Here we go. Here's one for you, Chris. <laughs> this is my thing for years. I mean, <clears> this is back before I knew you. This is... Um, I used to wear, I found it in, in Baron John, which is a shop that's no longer there at the Designer Outlet in Asheville. I found two linen suits, which is daring as it is, but in your late teens, early 20s, you know, no different. And there were two there. And I went in, the guy in there, he was about your, about mid 50s. Oh, you're not your age, but he's like, <laughs> sorry. You. He was, he, he was ultra trendy, but a guy that had all like, drew a bit of a geezer, but you know, a guy that's sort of deliberately dressed in quite young, he's in this training gear and he told me I looked great in them. So I obviously believed him. <laughs> and it, one of them was white linen with a black pinstripe and one of them was brown linen with like a cream pinstripe. And I went with the white one because I'd seen Will I Am on a black eyed piece video yeah, wearing a very similar suit. I thought that looked great on him. Not realizing I'm not like kind of that cool or a singer or a rapper, you know. That. And the other one, I just sort of like went with it. It was like one of those things where you buy two, buy two suits, it's cheaper, you know. So I bought them both and I used to wear the brown suit with Converse. I thought it was really cool. And this is no like. And then I stopped wearing it because I think two years later was when Doctor Who got rebooted. Yes. And, and people thought out, I was dressed yeah. up. Because I wanted to look like yeah. David Tennant, which I hadn't. And there was all these kids coming up weddings going, oh, great. You know, my kid love a photo with you. It's like, <laughs> it wasn't because I was good at magic. It's because I got it a <laughs> <laughs> And it was like kind of a thing. I thought, I'm so young. I'll have this kind of trendy look. And I actually used to, I, I mean, I struggle with getting shoes that don't hurt my feet. So I used to wear Converse as a bit of a really comfy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it went through a phase of like grooms at weddings that are like, that kind of grooms that had this, there was a phase where like they would wear Converse with a suit and the trendy mm. suit came. So yeah, I thought yeah. if you wear that kind of look, that kind of goes with it. And so I, I stopped because it was, uh, it was conflicting, but yeah, I've always liked to suit. I think it's, it's, it's a fine line though, because I remember doing a, a, a wedding. It was like a barn somewhere and there were, Lovely crowd, and I had been wearing like a kind of a tweedy kind of check suit or something, and it looked great there. And then in the evening, I went to a very, very kind of like uh, very upbeat show. It was a like party at like a rugby club, and they just thought I was dressed like an effing clown. <laughs> You're a fucking clown, dude. <laughs> you know, and it, so it's different things. So I, oh, when yeah. I'm going to a sort of an evening thing, now I think the safest thing is just go black suit, black t shirt, mm. waistcoat if you want, and that's sort of very Ant and Deck look, but it kind of. You, I used to have a spell, didn't I? What did I used to wear? Like a beige trousers you and had a blue, yeah, beige trousers and a blue, blue waistcoat. waistcoat. And I used yeah. to send you pictures of that because you used to abuse me over yeah, that one. It oh, was, it was the, standard, the standard Simon Burridge uh, <laughs> it was uniform, like a book, though, wasn't it? It's it was. It was. Book. It was ideal for me for shooting weddings because the waistcoat was ideal for batteries and things. My like thing that. as well is I think if you're in a wedding and and, and for me, you know, I'm in the video, we're in the photos, you should look de decent. Yeah, I, can't, look, I can't. I don't. Bear. I can't bear photographer. I've seen someone double denim. A photographer double denim. Before. Yeah, I mean, double denim's questionable anytime. anyway. Kind of yeah, but child, like, you know, or, I you think know. it's disrespectful. If you're not going reasonably smart, yeah. And you can sometimes get away with wearing jeans and a waistcoat, it still looks smart, but I don't do that either. But I've seen jeans and t shirts. Yeah, I really, I think it's really. It's almost disrespectful mm. to it's the disrespectful. wedding, isn't it? And I think, well, I've seen guests Or am up. I just old? I don't know. They no, don't no, care. No, no, because I think I, I get myself in trouble sometimes because I remember doing a wedding. It was at like, it was at like Chilston Park or somewhere with one guy who was a guest and he was in like jeans and a really, a shirt that didn't fit his hanging out. And I said like, didn't you know it was a wedding today, mate? You know, like <gasps> think it's an icebreaker. And he sort of took it in slightly the wrong way. But I'm also thinking, well, you know, a wedding it's a is wedding. like, yeah. You know, having a nice venue, people are paying a lot of money for it. So I think yeah. you have a duty of respect. And I think, I mean, part of the reason I took some time out was to get myself a little bit kind of healthier again, because I think I'm becoming a little bit unhealthy. I start to sort of, like, I'm walking around, I'm getting a bit war. I, I thought, you know what, I'm doing everyone a bit of a disservice here. So I think uh, you have a, you do have a bit of a duty. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with anything. I think everyone has got their own space. You should be comfortable in your own skin, mm. but just a personal thing. I think if you're not, if you're not given the, the couples, because it's very easy to stand at things like wedding fairs and that and give a big pitch and I'm going to do this on the day and that and yeah. I'm, with, I'm this and I'm this. You've got to make sure you're you doing that every time. I'm going to abuse your guests. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to come and I'm going to abuse it. Well, one guy said to me once, I said, I want to put you forward because I love all that kind of humour. I love the, all this sarcasm. I'm thinking, mm. I don't really understand what he means. They said, oh, we saw it at a wedding. It was really funny. And I don't consider myself to be a funny performer. You know, I've always, I've, in my head, yeah, I was like, are. really you serious. And I, you know, I'm always feeling because I'm always trying to better myself. And I look at myself on videos that people mm. are like, you doing. I think this was crap and that was awful. I need to be better. 
And I think humor comes out of just saying things out of shit and nah. panic. <laughs> having you are no presentation. I put together things, you know, I think you're I've 50% got a... magic, 50% but um, you're, entertainment. But you're very smart, Honestly. very witty, and very yeah, clever. You're quick oh, that's, with that's, it. Yeah. You've had 20 years of. That's panic, that though. That, is not, that is not any way. But it's funny. Kind of a it's thing. funny. Do you, do you and that's get... what helps. That's why I think Well, I can tell you the difference. I class you as one of the best in the circuit. Yeah. I that's really very do. Kind I class you, I, actually, because I know you, I class you as the best Stop it. circuit. That's very kind of you to say okay. it. And I have I filmed this, this guy, right? I'm going to stare at the camera for this bit. <laughs> I have taken a camera. Sorry. He's had a card like that. Yeah. And I can see the card. Yeah. And I have put a camera that close, four inches away from this card. And the card has changed. The yeah. card's changed. And Maybe I've slowed that down. I've done everything. Well, this is the thing, though, isn't it? Everyone's in the generation where everyone's got a, a video camera. So yeah. I think, I also think as well, I think there's a real you, a duty of like, you should always be trying to master like, your craft. And that. So there's always someone, no matter what you're, and that's uh, bring back to the entertainment value. If you're at a, a party or a table and you're having a lot of banter and people are laughing, they afterwards people think, is that the reason why? Is that so you can kind of get away with doing things and that? But there's mm. always going to be. One in every hundred people that it's got, they're just going to zone in on you and stare at you. Mm. So what they look at and what they're trying to appreciate is, has got to to work and it's got to be slick because mm. I think you everything should be slick. Um, but is that you don't want it to be slick at the risk of not being entertaining because actually one of the thing is is entertainment value. Is something it's really hard. I think it's you know you can stand there and do ten tricks at someone, but how do you do it so it's interesting? What yeah. makes it worthy of their time? Because if you reduce close up magic down to its absolute bear it's you're hired you're being paid to go to a party you're not invited to go up to people you don't know interrupt their chat to show them magic tricks <laughs> that they didn't ask to see and like it actually sounds quite depressing it's basically like speed dating it's like hitting on people over and over again well, really in, in a way about it's it, like it's, the kid isn't it yeah. it's like yeah. having a kid yeah, and go oh look kid. tommy wants to show you something yeah, yeah. absolutely and, and well that's a tactic. like tommy like this it's all a, the time yeah can i show you this you know yeah, yeah, look like, oh, at me, look at me you know? let's have a look see what, oh well done right what was we talking about people do that i mean if you go to you know a wedding is a good example because it's a mixed generation things so if there's kids there you know, you can always hear, you can hear people going to their kids, oh, there's the magician over there. They say it loud as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, if you find kids at a wedding early on and show them lots of tricks, get them really excited, they're going to tell all the grown ups or the adults. And um, grown ups is very much who you're talking to kids, isn't it? <laughs> uh, adults. And they tell them, oh, the magician's great. So when you go and see the adults, the the expectation is low. The kids have yeah. done the promo. Well, yeah. But the they've said it, they're good. the kids have said, oh, yeah. the magician's good. So if you come up and you're a bit weird and a bit awkward and you're kind of there doing like a couple of things, they go, oh, let's just tolerate this. This will be crap. <laughs> <laughs> and and get blown. Some then, people. And you're going under people. the radar perhaps. And I think that's probably better. It amazes you know? me. I think yeah. some of the best photos are yeah. when you are oh, at the video. The reactions. The reactions stuff, and yeah. they, like, they sit there and they're Oh but that's it because it's, it's about amazing. human interaction, isn't it? And it's always about the guests. I mean, we've talked about it before. We've talked, done work together. Is everything you do, the reaction moment, you try and put it so it's got the the right. guest in it. You know, mm. so if you're revealing something, their money ring, or you're doing a trick, you try and get the moment in their frame. So it doesn't really matter if I'm not in it. Mm. You know, it's that because they don't. That's what the people want to see. They want to see their friend or their auntie or whoever it is responding mm. they don't want to see me going like hey look at me you know that, that doesn't <laughs> convey anything and it's it's really hard because those photos you need a couple of pictures you know profile photos but really what you want is reaction photos mm. um, do you get nervous i know obviously you try and hide it which is a good thing but do you get nervous I before think, gigs and stuff yeah I, I do you know what? i think all performers get nervous to an mm. extent i think when you stop getting nervous is perhaps when you need to perhaps evaluate if your challenge is enough. Yeah. We're exactly the same because you're going to start making yeah. mistakes. I think you, um, you, you start making mistakes. And I think nerves is a byproduct. And there's a really good book called Golden Rules of Acting, which is written by a guy who's, a, who's a, as an actor, but he's also a very good magician, Andy Nyman. He's also a Darren Brown's producer, director, and a co-writer. And he wrote this little book, but it applies to performing in general. And he has a tip in there where he says, if you turn the word nervous psychologically into the word excited, it just changes your mindset. So you've still got that adrenaline that nerves create. But if you turn it into a feeling of excitement, it kind of eliminates the worry that goes with yeah. it. Because actually, so, what are we yeah. nervous about? Exactly. You know, yeah. if you're going to do that, especially for me, if you're going to do one of my mentors when I was young, a guy, Pat Page, a Scottish magician who's, who's passed away now. But he, he said, um, I remember saying to him once, what happens if a trick goes wrong? And he said in and in Scottish kind of way, you know, in that sense, but you're not a heart says you're not saving lives. If a yeah. trick is wrong, you just do another one. You don't get on. shot. Yeah. No. You wake up in the morning, okay, you're gonna feel a bit it's ego more than anything. Yeah, yeah, I think with yeah. magic, it's like, oh God, I'm nervous because if mm. I muck this up or if I'm doing something in front of magicians, muck it up, 
it's ego. Perhaps you, you know, you lick your wounds a bit and move on. But I don't think in the grander scheme of things, you, you know, you, you should have, but if you don't get nervous, then perhaps you're, I don't know. Get arrogance is the wrong word, but cocky. you don't want to. Yeah, cocky, yeah. perhaps a little yeah. bit. I don't know. Yeah. But it, I think feeling nervous is a good thing. Mm. I actually think it's something that that shouldn't pe- put people off performing because if you are nervous, it means you probably care about what you're doing. And it gives you probably... it gives you that bit of adrenaline as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go here and do thinking, this. God, what yeah. am I going to talk about? I've got nothing interesting to say. <laughs> you know what we're going to speak there's al- about? There's always a good nervous, but then there's that too nervous you know, person. You know, yeah, mm, absolutely. That, you know. There's always those tips of like, you know, you know what you can do to eliminate stage yeah. fright and all those mm. things of quick breathing beforehand and pushing the wall and all those little things that, that the performers do backstage. But I think if you're comfortable in what you're doing, if you've rehearsed what you're doing, um, it's different, I suppose, if you're going into film, like if you're going, if you're worried about filming a wedding or say if you've got that, no, because you've, I suppose it's, for you, it's the duty of kind of thinking I've got one shot at it. It's not going to happen. That's, 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 for that's all the yeah. nerves. Yeah. yeah. And I don't really get nervous. I no. get worried. Worried perhaps is the thing. I'm worried yeah. about, um, you know, I want to, I'm just worried that I've prepared myself, you know, yeah. I, I need to be prepared. It's not really a worry. I don't get nervous on stage when I'm playing guitar, no. you know, and I've played a couple of thousand people. It doesn't bother me that much because who remembers if a bass player plays a wrong note well this is and i just laugh it off do you know what i mean it's got to a point before where i've gone to do a bass solo and completely ballsed it up yep and you got to start again i just laughed (laughs) yeah i just turned it i just went do 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 you know i just turned it into a joke and no one's gone away going do you see that bass player messed that up yeah (laughs) because they don't care do you know what the 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 most important thing to say to someone is you're just not important enough (laughs) Well, there's a, there's a, do you know what? Do you know what? Just not important enough in people's lives for them to give a crap if you've made a mistake. There's a there's a, there's a really good book actually. It's it's, it's about entertainment. It's it's called directors. The subtitle is directors' notes for magicians. It's it, it's written for magicians, but it talks about nerves in there. And it said the big secret about what you're doing is that, and it's it's three words: is they don't care. Mm. Actually, mm. you know, you go up to a group of people. You, you, there's this thing about how do you interrupt a group of people at a wedding, and what do you got? Look, the worst case scenario is you go up to someone doing some magic for the wedding, and that you know, so they're going, they've got to be in a really bad mood if they say, "Look, bugger off," <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's it. I had it once. I tell you, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of weddings down in uh, the, the weddings used to be very different to what they are now. It used to be kind of church registry office, then a very large hall with you mm. know 100, 150 people in, and there wasn't really the the market there is now, especially in Kent, of barns and these structures and these, you know, format. It's certainly not where I was, but, you know, because no experience, then you're just doing whatever gigs. But I remember going up to a table at this wedding and I said, uh, the guy was, uh, was clearly drunk. And I went up to the table and I said, I had, you know, I used to be kind of a bit nerdy and a bit awkward, <laughs> or more so than I am now. I go, oh, this is magic. And he said, if you're a film magician, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, uh, I didn't know it sort of threw me a bit. And I was kind of oh shit, what do you do? So I kind of just sort of walked away, and, and I thought I'm not having this from this guy, you know. And I went to the next table and did everything I could, like big A, all the A material, got them really yeah. excited. And, and someone came up to the the buyer, like sort of you know a bit later on, and said, oh, you know, sorry about him. He's you know he's always a bit of a pain. He like he does that all the time. And would you come back over and that? And I started them, um, and I thought, oh, God, I felt a bit kind of, that kind of uh, it, th- it threw me. I said, maybe if I get time at the end. But I thought, this guy's an arsehole as well. Yeah, yeah. By that time, I was yeah. annoyed. I was pissed off because yeah, yeah. he'd like done that. And um, I did go back over, and he turned out to be a really great punter. But it was, right. if you get someone very, very seriously that kind yeah. of gets, it really doesn't want to see you, or you get someone who goes, I, re- look, I really don't like magic, show them. Mm. I think the worst thing you can do is, go, no, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes trying to convert you and make yeah. you love it because that's just going to piss them off even more. And yeah. You'll become the... I, uh, there's a really lovely thing of actually sometimes you forget when you do it all the time, there's people that have never seen magic before mm. live and for some people it might be the last time they see it as well. So it's for some people it's the first time, some people it's the last time. Mm. Some people mm. might see it over and over again, but you kind of make it... That's p- potentially why there's people out there that go, I hate magicians because it's mm. just a negative mm. experience. Mm. I, think I think it's... They just can't comprehend what's happened in front of them. Or why, maybe. And, and it, it freaks, freaks them out. Hate. It, it freaks them out. out. Yeah. They get, some you know, of them... Like, when we film your stuff, and we film other way, um, magicians, obviously, when we film all of you guys, we watch the situation, the women are like, oh my God. The men are like, nah. Yeah. Nah. But yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The, re- the common response of a bloke is no way. Nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I can't... I can't my brain can't handle what but I've you, just seen. You then get the men that literally watch every, every tiny bit. aspect of yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to trick him out. And it's the alpha male, isn't it? And yeah. it's that dynamic. And I the group psychology yeah. dynamic yeah. is then to try and get that guy yeah. in, you know, yeah. on yeah. your side as soon as possible. So, 
you know, if you you can you get pretty good at spotting that person. So the best thing you can do is make that guy your ally. Yes. Mm. Mm. You know, so you might be doing a routine with cards, and at some point, I'll sneak the card to him, and he'll I've consciously put it in his part, and then he becomes the focus. Yes. Yeah. And then weirdly, then he plays with that the whole time. They're yes. going, he was in. Oh, I don't know, mate. You know, oh, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It was like he's part of it, and now and he's kind of on your side. And he's that's like, a really good idea. It, you, yeah. you, you find Rather that than him trying of, to find exactly what you're up to. You just bring make, him in. Make him part of it, and it, yeah. I think. For me, the more you can give the moment over to someone else, the better. You know, I've been working on some stuff recently, you know, where I keep getting asked to these very small kind of gigs where there's like 10, 15 people for like a dinner or something. And you can kind of, you work through all your kind of stuff that you normally do, but sometimes I just have a couple of things you might do in that situation or maybe something a bit more formal. You do like an eight minute set with cards and it's all kind of interactive and that. But how can you give away some of the moments so it doesn't just look like you mm. being really clever and, and mm. put the moments in there? hands and uh, i think that's what people like about closer because they feel like they're right on top of it perhaps um, mm. have you ever fucked up big time and thought i'm actually gonna have to come clean here and say i've messed up or do you just carry yeah, on I think you just I, I, there's definitely times and i think you just kind of move on i mean what what's the i mean i've cut open kiwis before and there's not been any money <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I have a, a routine I do that you know the big climaxes I sort of borrow a note at the beginning and it you know I do it and then I kind of change it and they sign it don't they, they do sign it and they, 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 they say where they're going on holiday and it changes the currency and all these different things and I go on and crack on with other tricks and, that, and then the big climax at the end is like you know there's this this thing that's been like a keyword that's been in the I thought that get them to be in their pocket or it's in on the table under the cup that kind of trick and the big finale is cut it open they cut it open I said well, would you be what would, be, would you be amazed if it's inside and they sort of say yeah I'd be amazed if it was in there it's always when someone says God if it's inside there I'm not going to believe it and that's always the time when someone's going to start wrong they've cut it open they've gone it's not inside there and if you ever watch you feel like there's panic on my face because <laughs> but I bet they think that's a part of the truth yeah and they yeah. think Fuck, his but, acting's amazing yeah. it's like, you know because you know when you see magicians they, they do this thing of going like is this your card and you go no and, you, and they cry and act oh really you know, they, you know they know it's not your card and they're kind of acting and this look of panic where they go god this guy's really realistic this really looks like uh, uh, you know it's gone wrong and it's a panic moment but then what can you do it's you just kind of have to carry on and there's been times where um, what else has happened before I, I've done um, the I remember a long time ago in Canterbury it was a really like one of those sort of country pubs I was doing a magic evening there was a stone floor I was a couple of women I was doing the wine bottle trick through the table and I did the trick they had a big reaction and as I came to bring the bottle up the show, I dropped the bottle and it just <gasps> smashed on the floor and they, it looked like I'd just done that and it just gone straight to the table and just smashed on the floor. I just sort of let it happen. It was, uh, I bet they were clapping. They were clapping. There was glass everywhere. They were like, <laughs> and they went, was that not supposed to happen? I was like, no. And I do this. Yeah. I mean, this, but what, what, you know, what like, that's the only you, trick I know is the bottle one. What can you I, do about yeah. it? Do you have to think quick sometimes? And yeah. Think, Shit, this has gone wrong. All I the need time. To. And mm. I think you have to just, you steer it in a way that just yeah. kind of try and bring it round. Mm. Or, yeah. I mean, if you've made a, balls out mistake or something's really not worked out or someone's responded really badly or something's gone or you're getting into a bit of a weird situation someone the best thing you can do is kind of i think just stop and kind of start again or move on or mm -hmm. you just move on you yeah, know yeah. What, what you know what's the worst thing that's happened yeah. you can't find their card i mean mm. pff, what are they gonna do i've you know? seen you what you do is you move on so quick that yeah they've literally forgotten what's yeah. and what's then do about on. 20 other tricks yeah <laughs> 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 so they're so far along the line they just go I don't remember what happened anyway I feel a bit kind of can you do me a I don't think Chris is quite in that shop fully is he it's can deliberate you, can you move him over slightly can you just touch oh, come this or, way Chris yeah, come this way should I just move in <laughs> come this way so do you half hour to... in <laughs> <laughs> half I think you gradually yeah. settled and drifted out as yeah. you were talking I was, I was floated out yeah floated <laughs> <Magic. laughs> out one of his tricks <laughs> Uh, now, um, Magic Circle. Can we talk oh. about Magic Circle? Yeah, of course. What is it and are you in it? Yeah, the Magic Circle is probably is it the like a, most famous magic society I in know, the world. Yeah. I know I'm saying what is it. I know what it is, but I know nothing about it. So the Magic Circle is, um, it was, it's just over, oh God, it's probably a hundred and something years old now. It was started 1905 in a, a small group of magicians it used to be in a pub in london it started then it was uh at several places and now it's got its own headquarters in london and it's it's limited to i think a certain number of members i'm going to fail myself now by not remembering but it's worldwide but it's audition to is get it, in is it next door oh. to the ministry of magic magic 
What's the Ministry of Magic? It's in Harry Potter. Harry Potter. No, it's not. It's, it's near. It's, it's sort of around Euston, and it's um, it's an amazing building. I mean, it's got a full museum there. One of the, I mean, lots of very famous magic props are in there. A uh, the huge library, is a theatre, club room, oh. um, and it's. I mean, they, you know, it's it's quite. It's, I'd say fairly exclusive. I mean, it's certainly got a great moral code in the way it upholds the art of magic, and it's it's by audition to get in, so you have to perform. That's what I was going to ask. Them. How do you get um, in? Yeah, you perform a uh, sort of a, an eight-minute act in front of a group of magicians, and I think they invite people in now to sort of watch it. <laughs> <laughs> do, do? do the old thumbs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I get in? Eight minutes of that. <laughs> Progress to the finger. Um, eight minutes of that, just standing there. Is he doing that, a yeah. trick or is he having a nervous breakdown? <laughs> Got your nose. <laughs> Got your nose. <laughs> Although you know, you say that would be one of the things that people always love. I have this little midget hand. That comes I know. You've shown me it. It freaks Again, me out. It doesn't freak me out. For no like... reason at all. People go, "What was that?" And it's like, you know, I say I do that quite a lot. You know, it's, um... <laughs> he has his little hand yeah. up here, isn't it? Tiny little hand comes yeah, out. Of his head. <laughs> for it's no re- reason. Ridiculous. <laughs> Haven't you got one that swears as well? I did have for a long time. Yeah. I thought it was a bit too. No, I loved a, it. A bit too obvious. <laughs> I loved it. Um, yeah. So the magic stuff. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a very. Um, uh, it's an amazing thing to be part of. It's a, a magic club at heart, but it's got obviously, you know, the high values. It's There's lectures there all the time, shows. Um, and it's nice. I mean, I, I think it's prestigious as well. So it does carry prestige. People still ask about it. I mean, it's yeah. still very famous. I mean, back in the 90s when Paul Daniels was on telly all the time, he used to mention it all the time in his mm. shows and that on the TV shows. So people know about it. And I think it does and should carry a bit of, of, of prestige to it. And I think it's a good measure of ability. And it also pushes you out of your comfort zone to stand up in front of, peers and, and, and other magicians to do an act is is challenging but yeah. i joined it when i was young i joined there, there's a you have to be 18 okay well, i joined it when i was uh, there's a young magicians club element of it which was um you could join before you were 18 mm. um which was on a similar format so i did that and that was when i was in that they used to do a kind of a convention day with a close-up magic competition that was the competition i won mm. they gave me a little kind of bit of a little bit of a springboard to go out and sort of promote myself for gigs mm. when i was young um there's rules though, aren't they? Not yeah, rules show, don't not disclosing that's... secrets and yeah. things, which is... Is that why Steve, Stephen Mulholm... Some people might not even realise that Stephen Mulholm was a magician. Yeah, Stephen Mulholm was a... Re- uh, so Stephen Mulholm, actually, uh, when I did the competition, uh, when I was back when I was 17, he, he... We did the kind of the heats round and then I got into the final and then and won it. But on the, the final thing, he did it was the guy that was the judge and he did like a kind of some little kind of pep talks and give direction on your act. So he was the one that kind of, you know, gave me some yeah. directions back then. He's, but he's not a, much older than you though, is he? Is he similar age to me? Was he 45 now? I, I don't know, but he was a really good magician. Quick Trick Show, which was on ITV, which he fronted, was brilliant. And now he's kind of transitioned into uh, presenter. being a presenter. He's very a good, yeah. really good presenter. Really good presenter. And that comes out of... But he, didn't he get kicked good. out of the magic circle for showing something? I don't know. if he Did he? I, was that to do with the Quick Trick? Because the Quick Trick Show was a, a an ITV kids TV show, mm. which they taught magic tricks on. So it could Maybe that's the reason. Mm. I, I, um, all I know is he, he was kicked out of the magic but it, circle. But again, you know... I don't know what for. That is what the that's what the club kind of denotes as the rules is that you won't yeah. do that. So although I mean, there's a big thing in YouTube at the moment of people doing tricks and uh, videos and showing how tricks are mm. done and for this kind of you know, getting hits and, and views and ratings. Do you, you see some of them and think that's not how it's meant to be done? Yeah, and you sort of think, well, why? Why? What is that? But it's it's weird. It's like years ago there was the masked magician on ITV, sort of showing how tricks were done and mm. how illusions work. And I, I mean, you know, it's a big uproar at the time, but. No one remembers it now. Mm, People it don't matter. know. And I think it's not, it's, I don't think it's going to affect your trade. No, I don't think so. Because I, I think, think if you are just someone that relying on the, the trick and the secret, then perhaps it does. But I think the whole big thing you get into them when you do it is you think the trick is really secondary. It has to be like the entertainment value first. Look and, at it uh, this way. Um, wrestling. Yeah, res- wrestling. pro wrestling. Pro course, wrestling. Yeah. They came out. It was called Wrestling yeah. Federation. They changed it to entertainment because yeah. obviously it's not real. Obviously it's an act. Yeah. You know, it's, and uh, has that affected wrestling in any way, shape or form? Them coming out saying it's fake. No, I don't think it has. It's not like, actually fake. There's no. still people jumping off 17 foot ladders. Yeah, yeah. And stuff yeah. And like, they're still, <laughs> they get yeah, still yeah. Yeah. It's just, The only thing that's fake is, it, isn't is the storyline and yeah. the outcome. They're still beating the hell out of each other. You but know? you tell lies, didn't you? You know, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, the, with magic, you're telling lies all the time, aren't you? Yeah. You know, you're, but it's not malicious. And mm-hmm. the same with the wrestling, it's not malicious. I mean, there was that ah. very well-known Louis Theroux documentary years ago about wrestling where he kind of questioned it and said, you know, is it acting is it fake and they mm. were very closed about it and rightly mm. so i mean it's the same as when you see magicians kind of interviewed or talking about things yeah they will kind of skirt around the things because actually it's kind of that's you, what you're you kind need of, that yeah bit of that's, that's the mystery and it's what you're kind of you're part of the magic circle that's part of the rules to uphold mm. the secrets and mm. that's so 
there's plenty of magicians. If you're not in it, you could sit here all day long and go, well, this is how this works and this is how this happens. Mm. And, this. and you go, well, but it's still that's not really what it is, yeah. is it? It's still taking years to craft that technique. Yeah. And Even if you show someone, yeah. they won't be able to do it straight away. Mm. Maybe a couple of card tricks. Yeah. And I think, well, that, yeah. And you, you, you're kind of respecting what you do as well. Mm. You know, the same way, like you said about the wrestling, there's a, there's an expression that, that, that say magicians are guarding an empty safe, which I think in one way is probably true in the sense that once people find out how a trick is done, it's actually not that interesting. Mm. You know, it, mm. it's what you mm. do with it that, that kind of makes, you yeah. know, sometimes mm. the, it, you get the P, the response is, I don't want to know. That tends to yeah. be a male response yeah. is that I don't want to know how it works. I don't want to know how it's done. Mm. You know, I don't want to yeah. know. Yeah. I think it's a very naive fault to, to say that some of your tricks are easy to do once you know because they're not there's the sleight of hand technique yeah the sleight of hand and, and sometimes the boldness as well and I think the lot the longer you're in it the, the, the bolder perhaps you are with things is, is what happens I mean if you do I mean I do a bit of no, I wouldn't say I do loads of it but a bit of pickpocketing mainly watches um, when I'm working and it's always in the context of a of a trick mm. and there is, it doesn't matter how long you do that for, there is going to be the occasional time when you are mid flow stealing someone's watch, someone might notice. <laughs> and what can you do? You just say, Oh, sorry, I was trying to nick it, you know, time. you make a joke mm. and move on with it. But how can you do it? How do you, when they don't, how can you take someone's watch off their it, wrist? But it's interesting it's because easy. it's, 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 oh, it's not easy, but it, it's easy to be done because they're not aware of it, right? It, it, it's, it should be in the element, but if you take the watch and you're kind of doing it to make it look stupid, it, it's better in the context perhaps of a trick. Mm. Um, so you like, mean you don't keep them and just run, yeah, off just keep them run away. <laughs> I used to do it in that that cup trick. You know, when I used to do the cup and the ball and the fruit at the end, and and then I would maybe do it within that, and then they'd lift up the cup later, and their watch would be under it, and that's amazing. Because they go, what? How did this? You know, but I've had the situation before where I was doing a, a, a trick, and I committed. I was going to try and get this guy's watch, and uh, he was a guy, you know, very nice guy, he was getting married himself at some point. He lived in the bath. This is the kind of wedding you said I'd like to do. So I thought I'd take his watch. Short of putting my teeth on his wrist, I could not get this watch <laughs> on his wrist, right? I was wrenching. He must have been thinking, what is this guy doing? I had hold of him. I was trying to distract. And look, it's changed places again. And I was doing this. And I got it eventually. I was sweating. I was <laughs> and I got it, right? And and I thought, right, the, he's done this thing now where perhaps he must know, but he's not going to say anything. He's going to kind of instance, he's going to play along, right? right? Yeah. So I've gone through the rest of my act. And at the end is this little kicker finale I've said, and I've got myself on the other side of the table. So I'm not, and I said to him, um, I can't remember how I used to reveal it, but I pulled it out and I said, and this is your watch. And he was like, he was like clapping and cheering. I thought, brilliant. What a punter. What a great guy. Yeah, what a great LP. Yeah. And I but... went off and I thought, I got to drink water. I went and he came over to the bar just afterwards. And I thought, this is where he's going to come over and yeah, have that so little I, chat. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew I felt it, you know. Yeah. And he said, hey, just, I can have your car. I'm getting married. Just one question. When? You never touch me. I'm going, what? <laughs> <laughs> when did you get my watch? got your foot on his chest. <laughs> And he booked me and I tell you this story and I tell this story sometimes when I'm talking to people at, at wedding fairs and he said he booked me for his wedding and, and he booked me off the basis of that. So I'm at his wedding. It was at, um, I can't remember it was out at the back of Canterbury, uh, Norton Court and I'm doing reception drinks in the table and I'm going to do the tables and he comes over towards the end of reception drinks. I'm there with his mum, passed you a couple of drinks ago and sit down. He said, oh, I've got to do that watch trick later. And I thought, I'm not going to get away with that again because as yeah. soon as I touch him, he's going to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did something, and this is absolutely true. I was doing a trick for his mum, and his mum had a thin ladies' leather band watch, which is, is fairly simple to take. It's one of the ones that would be more elementary. And I thought, well, I'm not going to get away with it now. So I thought, I'll do it now quickly. Get it down. I'll take her watch. Take it really quickly. He's seen it. Took the watch. They call them through. So I've now got a watch. Oh, right? no. Wicked. <laughs> So, but they, they now think, right, okay, fine. Boom. And they go, ding, 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 bright again. Boom, boom, boom. Speeches. They're doing the speeches first. Now it's longer. So now I'm sweating. So I'm thinking, what you going to notice at some point that it's not there? So I think, does the speech go to the table? I thought, I'm going to go to the top table. Was, do a couple of tricks for him. And he said, oh, mate, you've got to do that. I said, oh, okay, look, I'll do it for your mum. And I go down, he's watching me. So I go to his mum, do a trick for her, don't touch her, don't bring her watch her. <laughs> he's seen the same trick in his head. Because all, <laughs> he's like, you know, close up magic is. <laughs> Is the lies that we tell ourselves, you know, yeah. a good close up magician is the, you know, and that's not why I'm kind of um, always kind of funny about with filming that. Like for yourself, when we do film, you're always very good that you, you, you kind of know what I do and you'll film it and it, it looks really good after. And I do it on an angle that I know it's, it's not it's, gonna... And it's the memory that people remember. So mm. there's things that people remember. And, you know, the amount of times I'll do a, a trick, I do tricks sometimes with like um, 
a wedding ring or something, you borrow a ring, it disappear. People afterwards, when they describe it to their friend, they edit that and they say, oh God, my ring disappeared off my finger and it appeared in a you know, yeah, white yeah. side of the room. Because you edit out those moments by making it more, um, you know, the emphasis on it. And the people focus, like yeah. to, it's a, a wisdom of the crowds where people go, well, I was fooled by this, but I don't want to describe it to someone and feel stupid. And they go, well, it yeah. must have been this. So I'll tell them this version of it. And they kind of, it's like Chinese whispers almost, yeah. you know, that goes along. And, but that kind of thing like that, you're feeling pressured. It's the same as you said earlier. Someone goes, oh, we want to hire you because you were so funny at that wedding. You're going, it was probably well, the then, people that were yeah. really funny that I was just paying off <laughs> yeah, on. I got yeah, nothing. Yeah, you yeah, go yeah. to the room and you're going, you yeah, know, I've, got to work, I've got to work my magic. <laughs> yeah, you go, you, you know, you'll come out and the photographer will go, you know, this crowd is crap. You know? <laughs> you know, you'd be working with a photographer or someone like yourself and you go, God, you tough crowd today. <laughs> go, oh my God, this is going to be, you know, they go, the guy thinks I'm really funny and I go, okay, and I'll try and be funny. And then it has the opposite effect because okay. you're only as funny as the people you're with yeah. have you ever sort of gone to have someone's ring or anything like that and dropped it or lost it or yes yeah ever... yeah so you have yeah so the the, the the short answer is always a public liability insurance <laughs> but again the times when it has have been have you like, broken stuff before I've, have, I, have I broken stuff I've had a watch fall to pieces in my hand um, as I've sort of stolen it that's that's the thing um, I mean and just get sorted out well, I mean, there's been occasions where there was one woman, it, it sort of broke, so it gave it back and it was sort of falling to bits. And she said it was old and it was sort of broken. But I, offered, I would give my card and I said, look, you know, I'm insured, you know, let me pay for it to be repaired if there's mm. a problem. But I mean, there's been times when I've kind of like, not through sometimes thought of your own, where you've borrowed a ring and you've dropped the ring, as it, you know, and you're thinking, where is that? Yeah. And there's lots of magicians that won't do anything with things like a ring and that. Mm. Purely because of that fact of like, if that does happen, what are you going to do? Mm. Well, you get nervous when I'm doing all this stuff with rings and taking photos. I don't like her. I think, I, don't outweighs, like her. I think the risk outweigh, you, you know, is minimal compared to the, the, the you know, the times. But I'll say I'll go out tonight and probably lose someone's ring. <laughs> well, when Rachel takes <laughs> pictures of rings, she'll yeah. take them away. She'll put them on a bush. Yeah. So like On a bush. <laughs> not on her bush. <laughs> she put them on her bush, take photos of them. <laughs> She put them on a bush or something. I'm like, Rach, what if it falls into the bush? Yeah. And then I'll go in and get it. <laughs> but no, I can't handle it. So it, I tell it, her not to do that. It is nerve wracking. But I think if something, you try to sort of, the, 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 the big kind of rule is when you're going to borrow something off of someone, make sure there's other people around, mm. um, you know, and I think not because anyone's ever going to accuse you of something, you'd hope they wouldn't. Mm. Mm. But if you do something with a ring for someone and you're outside and it's dark and they're a bit inebriated and that they might try and make out you've done something. And very important as well, it's going back to that lesson that someone uh, for anyone taught me is with the watch steal as well. If you take a watch at a table, sometimes even if you're not going to give it back straight away, it's never a bad idea just to flash that watch mm. in a way just so that other people know that you've taken it and it's yeah, a no yeah, thing. Then, yeah. They're in on it and then you're going to vanish it. Because another good thing you can do is you can flash the watch to the guy opposite, go round to him, get give it to him. He'll put it on. Yeah. And then that's a better trick because now yeah. the watch has vanished from his hand and bit reappeared over here. That mm. kind of making people feel part of it. So it's kind of like the magic is happening there whilst you're mm. there and, and, and amongst you rather than you doing tricks at them. But also in the sense that you don't want anyone to think that guy's trying to nick that guy's watch. Because if <laughs> they true. come back later and yeah. say, so nicked his watch, I've lost 20 quid. Because I've had it before people come out and go, mate, have you got my watch still? And I think they're, and then they're joking. They go, no. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going, shit, have I? I've, I've, I've stolen a watch once before uh, where, and I forgot to give it back. And the guy came up later and he said, you haven't got my watch, have you? And I said, no, obviously not. You know, I haven't done that. You know, I haven't done that trick. And I rem and I found it in a, in a pocket or it's gone through the lining of the suit and it has been gone. Right, right. Well, I've just started taking it and got carried away. Yeah. Um, but generally, you, you know, you just have to be a bit careful. I mean, if you if you were to lose something or break something, you'd hope it was seen in as, as genuine as mm. you haven't done it in a malicious way. Mm. Um, but just be very careful. Try not to buy a borrow really expensive mm. rings. I mean, a wedding band <laughs> is always probably better than a yeah huge diamond ring. Yeah, you sort yeah. of uh, you know yeah. bring. And here's your ring. Yeah, but where's the diamond? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know. Or is it still worth the same? You know, it's not a fake, is it? You know, it isn't now. <laughs> <laughs> So with your tricks and stuff, do you yeah. feel that you have to update them and you sort of uh, get rid of some and add new ones in and sort of constantly it's, that's a good update? Question. It's, it's really hard to um, change stuff because you get material that you think works really well. Mm. Uh, it's always nice to try new things. And I think you have a, have a broad repertoire because there are going to be those situations where you're booked for two hours, you go in and there's 10 people. <laughs> yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Mm. Um but one thing I noticed, this is, I realised this a long time ago when I was doing residency. So I used to do lots of restaurants and I did a, a residency down at a place in, in Hire, the restaurant. And 
I was doing it and I, there was a group of people and I did all my stuff there and they loved it. And they came at the next month and brought some friends with them. I thought, oh, they've come back. I've got to do different stuff. So I went to the table, did all different stuff. And then the guy came up to me at the bar. I keep saying when I'm at the bar, it's important to reference. I'm not like always <laughs> at the bar or like these at gigs. But, and he said, oh, that was great. Lovely seeing you. But could you come back and do this, 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 and this that we saw you doing last time? Because that's what we brought them to see. So I was kind of liken it to the fact that if you went to see your favourite band and they didn't do yeah. the hits, yeah, yeah. Yeah. then what do you do? So if people click onto your show reel or they've seen you at wedding before and they book you for their own event, they book you because they want you to, they want to see those things. Yeah, you know, yeah. Can you just make sure you do that? Yeah. That's what they wouldn't see you do. And if you don't do that, they're kind of mm. annoyed. So it's important to have your kind of core stuff. But for yourself as well, it's good to bring in new stuff and, mm. and, and just kind of, often it comes out of... Um, someone might make a comment about something or they might or sometimes the way a, a punter might kind of like guess what's going to happen it's not what's going to happen you think, well, that'd be quite that'd be a good idea mm. so you might work on that but you should always probably i think just from the nature of the time the dead time you spend traveling to and from gigs you're always thinking about mm. what could be new what could be better and, and looking it, at it's probably the same technique just a different storyline yeah different storyline yeah. what could yeah. work better with that how could yeah. you make that slightly better, slightly bolder? Could you shave that into something Use different? different objects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, and what's relevant, you know, mm. is it more relevant? I mean, you talk about a trick with the cup and the ball for a long time. I used to be very self-conscious of that because I think, well, it'd be better to use like a coffee cup and a saucer off the table and that's mm. more organic. And it, mm. actually people don't care if you bring a cup, mm. say, look at, you know, and you just do it with that. The mm. cup really has no bearing, but by giving yourself that, that kind of backup and you've thought about it to that extent if there is a cup on the table like, oh use this one and you start that's using that the one that's better that's yeah. what I was going to say you've got to use what's in, already in front of them yeah, I think if, so. they, if you bring something to the if you're bringing something to the it's table like they think there's something wrong with that but you if should, you're using something that's already on the table the most yeah it's nice if the most esoteric thing that you're using in your routine is, is a deck of cards you know that's mm. the most unusual thing if everything else you can borrow it things that you do with the people that are borrowed is always going to be more memorable. Because mm. again, if you use it every time you talk about that ring, next thing you have for dinner, oh, I was at a wedding the other day, this guy took my ring. It was unbelievable. You won't say, he said, God, my ring, it just disappeared, didn't it, mm. like Simon, didn't it? And it was in his kit. Oh, I don't yeah. know, you know, and you're going to talk about that more. Or if you get someone to sign their money and that, then when they kind of, you know, um, go and spend it, you know, it's a story. There's that, you know, mm. it's that ongoing thing. Um, but you die, yeah, going back to new material, always trying to do it. It's, it's more prominent with, stand-up stuff so if you're doing kind of cabaret stand-up show like a, for a corporate event you're doing like a 20 30 minute stand-up show and they book you again the following year often that is a situation where you're probably going to want to do a different, different. act mm. when you're doing yes. close up if they book you year on year they generally will book you because what you did went very well people yeah. remember one or two things yes. mm. but they don't remember everything yeah and you're not you giving know? them your whole arsenal anyway are you? no and there's certain things that people remember and you mm. can be there all night and you've got the it builds like a show close-up magic so you'll mm. be going around uh, a wedding or a drinks reception you're doing certain routines and then you get to the tables and you're doing other stuff so you're up in the ante mm. the whole time and those things that you do towards the end of the things people remember mm. I must admit, I do think you're missing a trick, pardon the pun. Oh, hello. With um, not having personal cards that are like... Um, what do you mean? Playing cards. Yeah. As, as business cards. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, it's an idea, wouldn't it? Because you end up giving a card to someone. Well, I had... I had for you see a, what I mean? You could, yeah, I did have a long time ago this, this routine where you do a whole trick, they pick a card and... You do all this stuff and then my business cards were like printed on like blank back playing cards and I'd give them a business card out of my wallet at the end. And on the other side was the signed card. It was kind of that. But it, right. to me, it felt a little bit too manufactured kind of thing. And, right. and I, you know, I you know what, a deck of cards, like... people are signing them all the time. I give them away at the end of the gig, chuck them away. People have been handling them. They, they get a bit mucky. Someone drops them in the grave. Exactly. Whatever. So why not have it as a business card? Because I think it'd be massively expensive to have them printed and... I, I don't know. Do you know. think it would be expensive to have? Yeah, yeah. Just use a normal deck of cards. This is this is. How much are you paying for a deck of cards? I bet you buy the cards. Two all quid, the time. three quid. But I buy you buy them in, in bulk. But <laughs> I don't know. I think a deck of cards, if it's printed with your name on it, looks like more think. of a prop. It looks like something a bit yeah, unusual. Fair enough. So you just said, don't bring something to the table. If he brings a magic card with his name, I on think it, it's a little it, bit arrogant. It's, it's a little bit like being too. I don't know. Maybe wearing gear that's. I've always had this kind of thing and I, I, there's ways you can talk about it both ways. I can only talk about my perceptions. Ways, ways of kind of, if I wore a really expensive watch when I was doing close-up magic to try and look flat, to some punters they might think, well, if you're wearing that, why are you doing card tricks at the table here? Do you, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yes, there's I an element of yeah, that. Yeah. And, um, but I've made I don't it. think that matters. I, you at my wedding? Uh, but I, don't think that, I, I don't think that matters because then there's also the flip side of that argument is 
this guy must be really good because he's you know he's got that kind of car he's mm. got a really mm. nice watch on so that's great as well so it's pluses and minuses mm. i think it comes down to your kind of persona and, and your things so going back to the, if i've got maybe brand cars yes there are situations where i think that would look really sick god he's got his own brand of cars mm. and everything that does look really sick it'd be cool um I, I'm probably just oh, more on the side. Of, I'm probably just a bit lazy with it, and especially I'm, that inside the bottle stuff. Yeah, but actually, you want that to look like a, a proper deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you know what I do with every deck of cards? Because if you go to a, a gig, and especially, you know, um, if you're doing an evening gig where people are a bit lubricated, shall I say, well, <laughs> say someone sign your name. Often people will write something rude on the card. They'll <laughs> draw something yeah. rude, and then what are you going to do with that card? You're not going to go next day to like the garden party and then pick a card. You <laughs> know, here's one for your mum, and she picks out a card and it says something like, you know, what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you're not using the same. As soon as someone's drawn on a card, that's it. That c- yeah, it will stay in the deck for that over? gig. It will stay in the deck for that gig, and you use it over and over because um, you know, you're it's there for two, three hours. Yeah. Cost effective. If there's a kid there um, that's really into magic. You give them the deck at the end. To you, it's, it's got cock but, written on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mummy, what's in? <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle says, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever show kids like uh, gigs, uh, some tricks? Or yeah, not? there's always a kid. There might be a kid. So you should be, you know, taken out of the magic. So oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, you meant like teach them a trick? <laughs> no, because there's no time. You can't be okay. bothered. I used to have a little DVD which had about 10 tricks on it that were really simple for kids to do. I'd give that, you know, I'd have them in my car and I'd say, here's one of it. Here's a trick. Um, Here's some tricks, take these home, learn them. Often it's like enough that you just say to them, look, you know, it's been great today. Here, these cards. I'll do a final trick, give them the cards in the box. They take that. People think that's amazing. Mm. Um, because for them, that's really special. You know, mm. the, 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 oh my gosh, this deck has done that. You know, yeah, yeah, like, this is yeah. amazing. Um, and I've had kids that again, deck, you see yeah. them again at other things and they come back and they've got the cards and they've oh, been practicing oh. and they're about twice the size. It's with dog ears. Like, Show me that trick again. And you go, well, we have the same thing with cameras. Yeah. We, yeah. we let, we use well, our you one give of, away the camera. Then, <laughs> the no, we let the kids, we let the kids use one of our cheaper, well, older cameras, yeah. you know, so if it's cheaper, like, if it falls out, yeah, they're all cheap. <laughs> Like one of our old cameras, yes. what we would use like as a, 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 backup, a third backup, backup. Third backup yeah. <laughs> we go, go around with that. And the thing is, they're going around filming family and the family are far more relaxed yes, because of course. the little kid going yeah. yeah, And it inspires this kid, these yep. kids. And we have, I think we're on our Three? fifth wedding. Fifth. Fifth. Yeah, fifth. we've got one fifth wedding from us letting a kid use a camera yeah that really the and then the dad's gone actually we want you to film our wedding yeah because we, the mo- that you've really inspired our kid you know doing that and that, yeah and last year i filmed this kid we took a photo oh, yeah. of him um, no you filmed this kid yeah, yeah. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> last year Jesus. i filmed this kid at another wedding yeah a wedding that i got from filming him as a because he was like four or five when yeah. I first filmed. Yeah. And he's like 14 now. This yeah. <laughs> okay, and, you're and, still like, oh. and I'm still taking <laughs> pictures of him, sending it to his parents. and say, look at the difference now. You know? <laughs> and I'm on the fifth wedding now of, um, yeah. where this is related to the fact that I let this kid. And that's really nice, isn't it? You know, the, the, to think that that kind of thing is, it leads means a lot to him. It's those little moments, I think, that are important. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, I mean, I do that. I do do um tricks with when there's kids at a wedding it doesn't matter how good you are at magic or how brilliant you are or who you've worked for and all your portfolio mm. stuff if you go to a table or group of people at a wedding as a magician as a kid there and you don't use that kid everyone would just think you're an arsehole yeah yeah you know, they don't care they you know so get the kid and i'm better at it since i've had my own kids because you're more comfortable yeah, yeah. you know and you've oh, got to have a certain funny. type of personality as well because if you're a bit creepy and a bit weird and you come <laughs> and you start manhandling or getting the kid to stand up they'll go get your hands <laughs> <on the child." laughs> and here's his pants yeah it's too weird you know it's like because because a kid will be yeah either very uh excitable very, there was a kid at the wedding fair on sunday and he was um he came up and he had a cool name and i can't think what it was but he kept grabbing nice. it and he was like he just kept grabbing them like grabbing it my pockets and the dad was sort of just standing there looking all ream and he had slick hair and he's like his kids there his slick name the kid's just abusing me you know? <laughs> other people other people around looking and going what's going on with that kid why is the dad not control so i just picked the kid up on my own sort of walking up to the other side and saying, right he's gonna put you on a different stand and that. <laughs> I think he was laughing away and i think those kind of things are okay to do if it's if you've got the right kind of approach i mean yeah, I've, you know, you've I, got I, an you experience know. with kids but with like kids at a wedding if you if they're a bit quiet and they say do a trick with little johnny here and then you pick him you know he's standing on the chair and he doesn't have any interaction you've got to keep talking for him yeah mm. or if he's too enthusiastic or try and gear it so it looks like he's getting one over on you yeah or he's mucking you up. oh that was so funny when he messed you up you're thinking i engineered that you know <laughs> it was giving me nothing but that's funny and they like that mm. oh yeah he messed you up didn't he you go oh yeah he did you know mm. not really but yeah <laughs> you were giving me it was like trying to get blood out of a stone at your table you know what i mean you know your weird uncle dave in the corner was like texting his thai girlfriend you know you're not interested 
and you're feeding the baby. Someone's like breastfeeding at the time. I've had that before. People are there breastfeeding. It's an awkward situation. Yeah. You know? And you're like, pick a card. Yeah. She's like, oh, sorry, I'm a bit busy. <laughs> Let's see for the right here's tip. Our <laughs> yeah. Here's a breast pump, everyone. <laughs> it's a weird scenario, but you sort of think, what am I doing here? You know, or like you're doing <laughs> magic over the camera at like a wedding friend. They've got a screaming kid in the pram mm. saying, like, we think we'd like you at our wedding. And they're trying to talk to the kid half of the Do you want to pick a cut? And over, <laughs> you think you're never going to book me because yes. I'm not creating any kind of moment here. This is just like laboring it. It's weird. It's yeah. awkward, well, you know. Because normally, if they come up to us at a wedding fair and you're talking and they do have a child. You're the guy that films the kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've said to him, will you stop? <laughs> Anyone? With a suit that comes the up and is, him that. You do the talking. The thing is, what I find is really sad is I love kids. I love kids. Yeah, good fun. And, but because I'm male, I can't. If she went to see, oh, you, she's lovely, and just picked her up without permission. Yeah, no one would bat her an eyelid. Is that a sign of the times it more is. than anything, though? And, and how you have to be so kind of appropriate. What's appropriate? And what's not appropriate? And I think you say about like kind of humour and, and being spontaneous. And I sometimes worry. I think you can sometimes say things, and I might sometimes say something or react to something and it's funny in the moment but you sort of say to the you know like someone like yourself afterwards maybe cut that out because if someone was watching that for the first time with no context absolutely then it could come across perhaps yeah. wrong and that's any comedy though isn't it i um, mean that's the that's that's the sad thing of life really i mean we've had that on we had you. That. we had that <laughs> really? we was talking it was edited weird so we, yeah. we used to use a an ai editor for short clips yeah and this editor um went on to the subject of someone being punched and the person that got punched hit the curb and died right, right? oh right okay but it's 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 brought that together with her grinning so i'm telling the story <laughs> he's and said, she's no, like, <laughs> no, it's, actually, it's in his head he's yeah. saying i normally get so cross when people cut me up and i take it too far so i've already taken them to court punched him right, you know yes, and yes. what happens if they do this and i'm going you're fucked up you know i'm yeah. laughing at how fucked up it is but, but got the most hits yeah because yeah. everyone was moaning about so how I'm, messed up she I'm, is for laughing people at someone are saying that i'm really mean and it's, I'm it's quite, context and, is a huge thing in oh, context yeah. is a really important thing and i think actually you have got to be very careful of that yeah. and how mm. you come across yeah, but it you say that you say you've got to be very careful of it we've got the evidence to show that it isn't that, that it isn't mm. that. yeah but you it's know? snap decisions isn't it now and especially now in the context of like social media and, oh, and, and, and clips and people see, like, so, like exactly. filming at gigs and they go do a quick trick or let me just film you in that you but, want to just be yeah. mindful of what you do i mean you what know you've what to understand sorry to jump in no, what no. you've got to understand is half of this stuff is done on purpose yeah like, we yeah. didn't even do that clip on purpose ai made that clip, yeah mm. right but people are making that type of clip on purpose just to get the hits. And, and yeah, absolutely. What's the same and with the magic is, exposure? You know, people are doing it. You're like, find that reveal. You know, this has made yeah. magicians so angry. And, and you that, know. Clip yeah. went, that clip went through the roof for the wrong reason. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still going to take them to the full podcast where they're going to see exactly it, what was happening. It's the element happening. of failure. Well, that's why we go back to, we can look back to the, the reality TV stuff. We watch it because we used to like to laugh at the bad acts and we mm. want to see someone in the background yeah. that's got a really bad, crappy time or life or, or something and we want to see them succeed. Mm. We watch it because we're weird. You, lots of magicians use the thing of like, watch magician, epic fail, goes, but then yeah. gets it back and there's nothing failure it's about the world, it. It's the know? world of the cliffhanger, isn't it? But yeah. There was always been cliffhangers. You know, you watch like Incredible Hulk in the 80s. Yeah. Something would happen just before or a car would be in midair and yeah. then stop, wait till next week. Cliffhanger <laughs> endings of that, but that's you know kind of I mean? gone a little bit in the world of like Netflix and binge watching and everything coming well, out in one this, go. But yeah, it, it, cliffhanger it endings probably. used to be, I remember years ago, you used to watch something and you'd have to wait till a week. next you'd week. Have to, yeah, you'd have yeah. to Twin wait Peaks, a week. Twin Peaks, that was a water cooler thing. It's like, what the it, fuck is the now, end of this? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. But it's just getting you to put what the next episode on immediately. That's mm. what it's trying to do. You want to know straight away. You mm. want to know, know straight, straight away. away. Look at things like... Um, but aren't things good that when they don't do that? When Broadchurch was on, that was they did, that was yeah. one of the last mm. things that was on every yeah. week. Yeah. And mm. you could only watch it every week. Mm. And it kept people hooked. Yeah. yeah. But people don't watch TV in the same people way. Now. I don't, watch, I don't watch, sit down and watch... You know, people don't sit down and watch something when it goes out no. anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can it's get that later. For you, I can watch it later then, yeah. on catch up. Yeah. It's all about the figures now. Um, you know, and the figures are, you know, you 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 end a show with and the winner is end. Yeah. Oh, I've got to find out on the next one who the winner is. What is and what yeah. may, what annoys me is they, they build it right up and sometimes the, the start of the next one is so shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's so shit. Oh, is that what I've gone on for? Just that. Is that what I've for? I opened the door and do you know what I saw? And then the next one is like a bottle of milk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my what God. Do you mean, you mean I'll just put that on for that? I just made it up, right? But you know where I'm coming from. Right, let's talk about <laughs> puppets. 
Okay. So. Now the tab. Let's go back to my me again. The tab yeah. theory had a lot of puppets involved, and I came to see you for inspiration because you have got a. I have got a collection of puppets. Yeah. Got a, a yeah. Strange <laughs> obsession yeah. with puppets. Well, you? You, I think it comes back to when I was a kid. There were right about the time I got into magic. I had this notion I wanted to be a ventriloquist, and then I realised it was very very hard. Um, because ventriloquism not only on a technical level, but with ventriloquism, a good vent act, it's writing a huge amount of comedy mm. script, mm. okay? And there's nowhere to hide beforehand. With, and this is no, not in any way, but a negative on it, with magic, you have the trick initially, and then humour can evolve out of it, and personality can develop over time. So mm. the trick is kind of the thing. Whereas with ventriloquism, it's like, but I think puppets sort of fascinated me, the ingenuity behind them. And I got a couple of them when I was young. There was a, a, a very one-off shop that's not there in London anyone Kensington that used to sell vent dolls but old-fashioned ones you know the, the old mm. school ones and I started collecting them and I, it was just a weird kind of obsession so I never became a ventriloquist and, but I still have this great affinity for them um, I don't know what have you got? do you know? no uh, lots a good not, 30 or 40 yeah and lots some of them are like real old and they're made like you know they're made of paper mache some of them, they're, they're old school and there was a guy Leonard Insull who's uh, the sort of the pioneer of Brent, British vent figures that I mean, long passed away now, but in the 60s, 70s, 80s was making them. And now they're very highly collectible. And now with the advent of eBay, they're fiercely kind of collected all over the world. Um, but I suppose there's some something, an appeal about them. People either tend to find them appealing or creepy. Yeah. And they're creepy because it's sort of a human face, but doesn't give you anything. So even if you're looking at me now, like with no yeah. expression, your face is still making tiny movements. Early CGI. Yeah. Yeah. is what it is in you know and early form of you know, CGI where you know it's not real yeah but it's but there's acting, something yeah, weird about talking. it and they're in horror films and that mm. but it's incredibly difficult to do and I just realised I didn't have the talent for it and I thought oh god I'd love to you know I'd love to have been able to do that and I still sometimes think I'd love to do that mm. still now mm. and I kind of think about it or I think you know maybe I could do like a one a five minute section it's a magic routine but it involves a puppet or something but I don't think I have the guts mm. still it just still feels like so unknown um well, because you, you borrowed one. I went round to your house and yeah. see. You were too scared puppets. to take some of them, though, weren't you? Because it was like some of them you were like, I'm not I, taking that. I had, I'm, I'm, not. I'm one of those. There's a there's two people in this world. There's people that borrow stuff off you and then lend it to someone else. Yes, and those people I, mean. I can't stand. Yeah, and then there's people like me that borrow stuff of it, and I will protect it with my life. Yeah. And if I've had it too long, you used to get nervous. Then, like getting see, it back I borrowed to it off you, yeah. and then, and then it went down. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. So and I'm like, Matt, I'm so sorry. I got this. it was yeah. on top of a shelf. Yeah, it was in the front room, and I was like, I kept taking move. pictures of it for you <laughs> to let you know that I was still looking after. And I wrote you a picture. You could have taken loads of pictures at the beginning, and then just kind of, you know, just filtered <laughs> very them through. True. Yeah, very true. <laughs> I should have filmed myself with it in front of you. I should have FaceTimed just saying, <laughs> so, look, it's all right. Yeah, no, they are. They're, they're a fascinating. Thing. I mean. I don't know. You'd be probably be surprised. Maybe you wouldn't be. There's a lot of magicians that have got a, a sort of a, an allied arts interest and in, in collect things like that. Mm. Um, David Copperfield, famously, probably the most famous magician of our time, would started off wanting to be a ventriloquist and has got some amazing. He's got some of the most famous original vent figures in his collection. And um, there's lots of there's vent figures in the Magic Circle um, of, of performers that have passed on, and, and the figures are there. And I don't know. It's an allied art, I think, um, but it's very very difficult and. I still, I'm still massively drawn to it, mm. but still not quite there. I think that what I would do is I would uh, phase it in. I'd love to do, be able to do it because I think it'd be quite funny. But I think you've got to be very technically skillful with it, like like with card stuff. You you learn um, you know you learn your techniques, yeah, you, you can improvise. But if you could get very good with event stuff, you'd want to be improvisational. Yeah. I think you know, and those people that well, do that, it. that girl does what the lady does well, doesn't she? The one that puts the Mask. Just a mask on T the bottom. Nina Conti. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. What's her name? Nina Conti. Nina Conti. She's brilliant. That's very good. Yeah, because you see, she's got a really lovely way about her as well. She, yeah, she's sweet, isn't she? Sweet and, and a bit of a Carol Smiley ish. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? And if you look at some of the really good, successful ventriloquists, their puppet they use. So hers was a, before she started doing the mask, and it was it was a monkey, and it, mm. all it had was a moving mouth. So they're mm. very, very simple. Mm. Paul Zerdin, his puppet Sam, is just very basic. It's a soft puppet, but it's just a mouth. So some of the ones in my collection, they've got, they're very complicated. They've got lots of movements. They do all these different things. But a lot of the very successful events, they don't, they're very simple because it comes down, you sort of detach from the fact that it's the person talking, yeah. you know, it's them speaking. And especially when you see yeah. people that do a show and they've got two or three characters on stage and they're voicing them all. And there's some, you forget that's just one person mm -hmm. on stage. Mm -hmm. Well, I was quite inspired by it. That's why I used it. Because yeah. 
ventriloquist to be a ventriloquist is very hard yeah but to pretend to be a ventriloquist yes. is very easy yes absolutely yeah. very easy yeah. if you're an editor and yeah. stuff like that you just put the voice in later yeah absolutely. yeah yeah, no, yeah. Act, no, no, our actor Jamie, uh, Dave, um, Dave Bannerman Jamie <laughs> Bannerman Jamie <laughs> Bannerman the actor yes he wasn't too bad at it actually no. he he did it in a way where you could sort of see his throat going a little bit yep but you uh, need, I think you need that. something well, well, famous, the Famously, but, uh, 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 one of my most famous English ventriloquists, Peter Braff, who's, who's carried Archie Andrews, was very famous. He was the most successful ventriloquist of his time on the radio. It was a radio show, which is probably one of the weirdest uh, things. And there's a clip of him on YouTube yeah. uh, where he was on a, a, ch a, a televised chat show. And he wasn't that brilliant yeah. at, at mm. moving this movie. Archie Andrews became so famous in this radio TV because it's mm. pre-TV so mm. yeah all these celebrity guests and he was doing this and the character he had great character development in that with mm. the puppet but as soon as you saw him like in front of people he it wasn't that good he, no. was, he was crap it was, put, put on a voice it was yeah. awkward yeah. you know the, yeah. when you watch the sort of the, the more you know I say contemporary I mean you know uh, I'm sort of talking 80s 90s like Keith Harris and that with Orville mm. he was incredibly technical mm. Ray Allen Lord mm. Charles and that um, they're really 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 yeah. good at it and it's but it's incredibly difficult to be very proficient and the, and the same we said about magic there's always going to be one person that's staring at your hands yeah with ventriloquism, you get captivated by the puppet and you forget to look at the person. Mm. But there's always that one guy that's just going to be burning the ventriloquist to check his lips mm. Mm. the whole yeah. time. You know, it's, it's, it's the B's, the P's and the, the W's that are the difficult Do ones. Do you ever remember the act? And I think it was a Welsh guy that just held a brick. No. And he went, held a brick? He held a brick. He said he was a, <laughs> so I've got a brick here. Hello, I'm a brick. He just held the brick. No, I don't remember. But he wasn't it. really a venture. He was moving his mouth and saying it as well. Yes, that, no, it, I don't. It, it was just so different, you know, back then. It yeah, must yeah. have been early 90s. But there was a lot of magicians. He sat there with a brick in his hand. I've got a brick here. Just brick to. and talk. And he just, <laughs> and he turned to the brick and his mouth was still be moving. He goes, hello, I'm a brick. And at the time, it was like, it's so different. It was funny. I mean, it felt like something you had to be there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we were only young at that point. Yeah, you know, we, we were like we were two just, or three. We were still playing in the sand pits at that time. <laughs> On that time. note, thanks yeah. for coming. <laughs> well, obviously, the big joke was it was the COVID times, wasn't it? When lots of ventriloquists were kind of doing it with masks on, you know, with a face mask. And that. <laughs> yes, so this yeah. is great for ventriloquists. And, uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's um, I think it's, it's amazing. You don't see huge amounts of acts mm. like that now. And I don't know whether that's a sign of the fact that, you know, you look at some of these that came up through things like the comedy clubs and the working men's clubs back in the day years ago and there was a place you could go out and do your act every night it was where mm. Paul Daniels famously came from he was working men's clubs and he famously did like you know I think it was like two years straight and he had like three nights off in that you know that's why he was wow. so sharp when he got yeah. to TV mm. his act with that cup and the ball is so slick and it's from doing it over and over and over again and I think it would be nice to see that kind of come back. And there's a few people doing it now, like, you know, room in the back of a pub or comedy nights where you could just go in and do eight minutes and yeah. just do it over and over every single night of the week. Yeah. And master it. Go mm. around. Yeah. And, and if you've got a reputation, if you're working in Kent and you've got a reputation as the, the close up guy that does weddings and you're worried about killing that, go outside of Kent and, mm. and just go mm. somewhere no one knows you and just hone it because that's often the thing. It's, it's getting that flight time. It's why loads of performers go to Edinburgh, you know, then rehearsal yeah. with a show yeah. and just go, you, where else can you do that many shows in that short yeah. space mm. of time yeah. and get it slick? Brilliant. And do a trick pause. Is that boring? Is that <laughs> kind of boring? <laughs> no. You've been boring for an hour and a, whatever. <laughs> hour and a half you've been boring for, but you know. Have we been going an hour and a half? Hour and a half. <laughs> and you were nervous, see? It's easy, isn't it? We yeah, keep you nice not, and calm. We're not really we? talking about anything of that great interest though, are we, I suppose? <laughs> oh, that's that's a <laughs> way of selling yourself. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so <laughs> if <laughs> anyone that's in the tab theory, which is obviously <laughs> <laughs> just to keep it interesting. Uh, yeah. Um You'll notice there's a magician in that, and he's called Chris Hardwell. <laughs> and you're Chris Harding. Did you know I'd named it after you? You did, yeah. You phoned me up and sent me a text about it. Did yeah. I? So did that, you get look, his permission? Look, I said, look, this guy's just I didn't a sign any Yeah, no, I met him, and he was like this really slick, good-looking guy. And it was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry, I made him slimy as Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely savage. I can't, I can't believe you said that. It's, uh, yeah. it's not very nice. And he didn't perform one trick, did he? Did he in not? the whole episode, he didn't, he didn't need to perform a trick. It just said on his title, Chris Hardwell, magician. I, don't, I thought he didn't mm. do a trick in it. The trick wasn't by him. Yeah, it oh, was. yes, it was. It was. I, it was in the the door. Yeah, I cut that. That card trick where he, he does it backwards so and all the cards, the cards. That's a flourish though, isn't it? That's like doing that. <laughs> he does, yeah, but a backwards yeah. flourish. I mean, yeah. they're just appearing in his hand. <laughs> didn't we do that once when we made that promo? We bit? did a promo. We yeah, did we a did promo. I love them. <laughs> Peter could not walk down that corridor. <laughs> we love um love em. Should we explain love what that entertainment is? What was that? and media? Yeah. 
<laughs> and we did a promotion. We had a DJ, we had a singer, um, we had a photographer, a videographer, us two, and a <laughs> magician. And we we had fun with that, didn't we? That was bizarre. We, had that back, we did that backwards, and we had to get you to walk backwards. And I yeah. think the most entertaining thing is that that video is about three minutes long. Yeah. But the entertaining thing is the 15 minute outtake video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, funny. Well, we don't know what happened. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> I think Peter took up half of that. He's just he? trying just to get Peter to walk in a straight line. And <laughs> yeah, and, and, oh, do you want me to pick the mic up now? And when you're to... doing something like that, the more times you do something, he was the getting more, stressed. The more it was hilarious. It becomes, and then it becomes a bit more about like you become flustered with yeah. it, and you know it's and just getting um, the DJs to throw out a couple. Of... Was you there when they were throwing out? Yeah, the, the, the throwing out the CDs. CDs. <laughs> so funny. was that rap? Yeah, I have to put a link on for that. That's a, that's a funny outtake. That was a good suit. I think I had a tweed suit on in that. It was like a tweedy kind of suit. Oh, you had your yeah, usual suit on it. Yeah. Yeah. You had your usual suit. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, Doctor Who. Suit. It was a Doctor nice Who suit. suit. It was a yeah. nice suit. It looked great. That was, was a great suit. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you can do us a trick. What do you want to see? Or do you want us to do a separate video with a few tricks, card tricks? <laughs> we can do. We can do a bonus video. Yeah, we can do a bonus. Put some put some live feature. footage as well. What well, people want to see what I'm doing. Have you got exactly any live footage? Oh, here we go. People want to oh, see. Yeah, let's make it all about you. People want to see it live. Right, Simon doesn't like editing this. Why? So he's because he can't be asked, can he? <laughs> no, it's, it's the podcast, so I don't want to do too much editing. I'd rather spend the editing on the customers. Keep you know, it that, raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like the so I will not cut any of this unless there's something you really want removed. But you haven't said anything that no requires incriminating. No, maybe no. you've basically told everyone I'm a paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, but he's happy to keep that in. <laughs> uh, yeah, think of that. Uh, think about. Well, I'm not everyone. Cut, I've got you know? five children. Five children. You've got five children. I have five. Two. I have four sons. One daughter. Crikey. Mm. My eldest is thirty this year. God, same mm. age. No, not the same age as me. Not no, he's not the same age as you. <laughs> he's only six years old. It's I'm six years older than him. Wow, is that like a girlfriend? If I had you, I'd have been twelve. Here, all right, <laughs> home, and then, he's like, and then his dad went, all right. <laughs> like when I hit, I left that one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> do, well, do one. Let's end it with one trick. Is that me? Yeah. Should we end it with one trick? Yeah. What yeah. should we do? I don't know, do but let's um. Like? Let's do the old, um, okay, so if you want to come on the podcast, if you're a business or if you're... Do people write in fact, has anyone ever kind of said, I want to be on it? Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Guess who we've got coming? We've got an MP coming, local MP coming on soon. Okay. <laughs> Get uh, the old paedophile chat ready for that then. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's not um this is still we're still using this so, uh, no, i meant you more than me it's not oh yeah we get oh sorry i see what you mean now i thought you were accusing you not, that no. i knew i was talking oh, about you sorry about that viewers and listeners um sorry listeners listener <laughs> sorry about that listener it's a debate on that isn't there when you're talking to podcasts it should be listener as if you're talking to the one person that's listening or listeners that's a very good okay so what is that i i would say listeners but you're right it's one person listening so sorry about that one listener and we only have one person listening. So <laughs> Rachel's mum. Actually, yeah, yeah Rachel's mum. Yeah. No, it's us. Did I get it? Us, yeah. it? We're, we're reviewing no, it. In the last month, we've had 68,000 views. So what else does this say on here? Okay. This, is, this is other stuff just, we're doing later. Because so. Simon is very good at having a conversation with someone and then going, oh, I've got a question, so I'm going to ask it right I'm now. I'm trying to be a better interviewer by writing stuff down and waiting for you to finish. <laughs> is it because you've just got a bad memory? You just no, start writing, I've got a remember. terrible memory, Have but it? also why you're telling me the answer, you'll think you're I'm drifting off thinking of something else yeah. and I don't want to. I want to be listening to what your answer is because right, by I the see. time you finish the sentence, I yeah. forgot what I asked you anyway. <laughs> Shame right, on trying to be better trying to be better so um if you want to come on the podcast it's um well it's the same address for everything if you want to come on the podcast or sponsor the podcast um go on to www.cherrywoodpro.com forward slash podcast <laughs> and you were what are you laughing because it's just <laughs> yeah. embarrassing yeah. it's embarrassing saying this cherry pro please <laughs> please like share and Avoid. Subscribe. No, subscribe. <laughs> oh no, that's like, share, and subscribe. Please yeah. share it. Share it with a friend. Yeah. Oh, Chris, or with someone that, that you don't like. Let's have your details. We need your if details. There's someone you hate, send them a copy of this podcast <laughs> to know that you've wasted an hour and a half of their life <laughs> by telling them some useful content in there. And then by the end of it, they go, "What was that all about?" Anyway, we're going to, you know, I thought it was going to talk about the art of magic, and it's going to be really informative. We're going to find out a couple of secrets, and he was just sitting there, and they were talking about puppets. And weirdness perfect, perfect. thanks Social for that like. anyway what I'm going to do is after this I'm going to take the camera
camera and we're going to actually hold it in my hand and film you doing some stuff close okay. up if you want to as a bonus i don't know if it'll help with the podcast but if you don't want to just listen to interested. it you can watch it on youtube because you'll be better off watching this bit on youtube but i'll make it the podcast as well so give us your details chris how can people book you find you um kiss you chris harding magic.com chris harding magic.com yeah facebook twitter internet linkedin myspace everything blimey myspace <laughs> yeah is that going. still around? I, I, I said it and I sort of thought. <laughs> you know what I don't really understand is <laughs> what link, page are you on? I don't really understand LinkedIn. That's something I don't understand. LinkedIn's, uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn's more of a business type thing. Yeah, I try we post push. on LinkedIn. We Do post you? a podcast on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's I don't really Under my it. name, though. You... Lots of notifications on it, but I don't really understand it. Do you do TikTok? No. Do you understand it? Oh, I don't understand TikTok. I don't understand TikTok. No, even the young, <laughs> young pies I, like us don't understand We do TikTok. Um, most of our stuff's Cherrywood Pro based on weddings, and I just put the podcast over that. But on TikTok, we yeah. are just Cherrywood Podcast. What is TikTok? It, I, don't, does it work? I don't know. But short clips. To be honest, it's just short clips, which I like about it because you don't have to Watch give it much effort. You don't have to give TikTok that much effort. You just put a <laughs> clip on it. This is for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> have that bit for TikTok. But you know what it's like when you're posting something. Why is your pair of shoes on the floor? I've just noticed. I've taken them off. My heels are killing me. They look like the just... sort of ones that, you know, when you go around a garden centre and they've got like a weird clothing department. <laughs> And they'd say that you can get them shoes or the ones, you know, Sunday newspaper and there's like a little glossy magazine and a picture of someone with a shoe balance on their finger, like those kind of shoes that are like, look at these for like lumbar support and that. They're kind actually of just gym shows. They're just trainers. Sketches. No, they're car- carragers or whatever they're called. Aren't they a sports direct home brand or I something? I don't know what that means. Yeah. Car- I just only realised you've just taken, you've taken them I off. took them off about an hour ago ah. because my heels are killing me. I've done both my heels in. I did a Ninja Afternoon. Warrior. Wow, what's Ninja Warrior? Um, it's that, like a course that you do where you've got to push different lights and things but Ninja Warrior is also one of those things where you run up the ramp and try and get the highest light my, ramp, and I was determined to get this top light and yeah. pulled the back of my heels <laughs> and now I'm just in agony all the time uh, mm. and I played badminton yesterday so it got better stretch, I played badminton always stretch before I was too embarrassing to stretch well, in everyone, front else, of it, it yeah. everyone kid, else is doing it though, it was a kids thing everyone else is doing it that is a kind of I know coming event Something else going on. Yeah, get out of here. Right, <laughs> right, let's do one card trick. Bad here looking on, on phones, isn't it? That's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. We look on phones. We, we try and keep it relaxed and people just look at their phone every now and then. You answered a phone call the other day. I had to answer a phone call. <laughs> I even rang you up the other day and you told me you were coming out of hospital. I did. <laughs> what was she doing in hospital? Look at oh, that. So well, we'll tell you about that later. <laughs> Here's a good trick for your memory. Right, okay. The, the, see if you can sort of aim it for the camera. But well, the camera's so far away. Look at this. What do you think? Yeah, I but have I can dynamo? zoom in. I, I'm filming it in 4K, so I can zoom in. But mind that yeah. cup, so they might not see you, the cup. Well, there's something in it. <laughs> Just put it on it's this one. I was going to do that bouncing <laughs> thing where you throw it back up and give it a of stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you do? But it has stuff in it. You do it with a, it's like a pile of bread roll. I don't know if it had stuff in it. That's what I went to do it. I saw the coffee in it. Oh, shit, I bet not. <laughs> All over this cheap camera equipment. <laughs> oh, fucking okay. hell. Right, what are you showing me? You're showing me an ace of it. I've got to describe it as well. Do you want to describe it while he's doing it to Give me? Give me your hand. Hold your fingers like this. Like like this, okay? Right, Simon is holding right, so his he's got me out. holding my fingers out as if I'm going to take one card. And you have got one card. So he's what card do you have at the moment? I didn't actually Have a look it. to check to make sure. Right, Try and so show me. He's asking me to see a card. Do you need to see the card? I right? know what it is. It's the ace of hearts. This it's is a little bit. This is, this is, let's make this about your memory. Let's make it about your My memory, memory is terrible. So can you remember that ace of hearts? Ace of hearts, yes. I can remember the ace of hearts. I, I've got me holding this one card everywhere. And what card is this? This is he, the ace of diamonds. He's yeah? just shown me the ace of diamonds at the top of a pack. Are you sure you're happy that you can remember the two of those? I mean, I don't want to throw you off too. So. No, no. Ace right. of hearts in my hand, ace of diamonds. So if I swap them over like this, okay, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, you've got ace of diamonds. I do that which one do you have now ace oh of hearts God. or ace of diamonds rachel's like kind of staring going i don't know which one's which, well, which one i have, think i've got the ace of diamonds below and the ace of hearts above why is that in a hesitating way because you're going to trick me <laughs> as if like they're the other way around yeah, yeah? okay so you, but you do remember different... they were different cards you do remember, remember they, they were, were ace of hearts ace of diamonds yes turn your hand over <laughs> oh, oh look. miracle stop it that is just unreal so he's basically given i've got two queens I've got a queen of hearts. You are a, no, Evan. You I've are got a queen, queen of club Simon. and I've got a queen of spades in my hand. How and exciting. he literally, I don't see, know. I, I, see, it's either, amazing. I'm, I'm watching now and I don't even amazing. know. I should have how. held that to the camera. You should have first. done like a thing, yeah, yeah, where you kind of made it yeah. feel a bit more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you didn't. So let's do it again for the camera. 
Okay. And I, I will hold it this way for the people to on the camera to see. So we're doing it for them. You can do the same trick. I'll tell you what, do this, do this, okay, do this. Okay. Um, what you hold, what, you, what you're holding. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you said do this, do this, do this, know. and you haven't told me anything. Say stop somewhere. Stop you, somewhere. You, can you remember it? Yes. Did you do the say, did you do the summer at the end? Like a real kind of, yeah, okay. Uh, it was um, a red card. It was a red card. Three of hearts. No. Okay, what was your card? Eight of diamonds. Hold it to the camera. No, 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 perfect, right, thank you, Chris, it's been a pleasure, mate, and it's good to see you, and you've lost so much weight, and we didn't even talk about that, how much weight have you lost? Oh, God, five stone? Five stone? Yeah. Fuck me. So I was, so that was, kind of, I think I was, yeah, I so this is happens we always say goodbye and then we start talking again i'm so sorry uh, I, just, I was just getting a bit kind of unhealthy i think i did it more for just feeling like i was letting myself go a little so bit are you using anything like an app or something no just no calories? i just no i just kind of have just been really more i do it too i fell into really bad habits of eating really late after gigs and eating probably the wrong types of foods um and not being conscious about anything i ate at all i mean i used to be really conscious of it probably just before i got married just from it my wife Prior to that, I'd um, <laughs> sounds really weird saying this now. I trained and qualified as a personal trainer oh, with, really? double, with double distinction, like le- level three. And, I was gonna, and that was what I was going to do. I was going to do that alongside magic. So I used to work in a magic shop. I used to do gigs in the evening. Then I stopped working in the magic shop and I was doing gigs in the evening. <laughs> and then I just cop. We've already been through. Did you have any other jobs? And then I decided. <laughs> I decided that. Um, I would. I lived opposite the. So I got really into sort of fitness. I moved to live opposite the gym in in, in Ashford. I got really friendly. I used to get every morning. I used to get up at like five thirty. Go there at six. Do two hours. And then I thought I, I qualified as that. And I thought I'd do that and do gigs in the evening. And then I sort of met my wife. Um, she sort of encouraged because I'd stopped doing wedding fairs a little bit, you know, because I was doing plenty of corporate gigs. Then she was doing sort of wedding fairs at the time. So I got back into it. Fell back into it. And then just got back into it. And the trading thing sort of fell by the wayside. And then, as cliche to say, but then you get comfortable, don't you? And I was kind of, we had kids and I kind of was just ticking on fine. And then suddenly I kind of reset. I, was, I suppose it was probably about a year. Well, it was just over a year ago. So, you know, when you're walking by the supermarket and that like, reflective window outside, I look and go, who's that? I'm like, oh, it's me. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And I just, felt, all the time. I just felt like, <laughs> and there's no, 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 um, no kind of opinion on every, you know, I think people are all different shapes. Sizes. It doesn't matter. You know, I think you've got to be just it for yourself. And I just sort of felt myself, I could feel myself feeling a bit unfitter. I thought I wasn't perhaps kind of being as, as, as active as I should be. And I just decided to kind of just be mindful of what I was eating. That was it. Really. So you've done no exercise. No, I mean, I don't really, I drink lots of coffee, lots of water. I don't drink loads and loads of like booze or anything like that. I mean, I think I think the mistake people make is they do things like crash diets, and yeah, then you, yeah. it, then it's not sustainable over a long period yeah. of time. So, what is it you've been eating? What do you eat now then? Just whatever. What I mean, I've, I've actually got a little bit of an addiction to Nando's at the moment. It's a problem. <laughs> right, okay. So, I've had Nando's three times since in the last like, seven or eight days. Right. Okay. I have, I have to go. Shops and, I have to go and get it because. Um, they don't deliver to where I live, even though the land is about five minutes around the corner. So it's now becoming awkward because when I go in there, I sort of now I'm thinking about ways to try and pretend to be on the phone as if I might be picking up for somebody else. <laughs> if I'm all doing the same thing. <laughs> a takeaway for uh, Chris, I, th- I think it's been ordered, it's, but I'm not really sure. It's like, high protein, isn't it? Yeah, so. No, it's not. It's just I love, I love I hummus, the wrap and the chips. God, I fancy you, now. Do you want to go up to Nando's? Or? Um, I love it, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I just try and be, I just try and be mindful of what I eat. Try not to eat too late, but it is hard because mm. the kind of the performing and lifestyle and the hours that you keep and you at a wedding. Oh, we've yeah. got you food. Oh, stay for this and stay for that. And um, you know, you go home and unwind after a gig, and you're up late, mm. and you might be eating some tea and some biscuits and all that. Mm. And I don't know. I, I think probably the reason why it crept back at, upwards from from being very, you know, being slimmer before was. I did it before and just before I met Charmaine, I'd, I'd kind of like, you know, got super fit and that, but I lost weight quite quickly. So I think in the back of my head, I've always thought, well, actually, if I just shifted my kind of lifestyle a bit, mm, I can do that quite like quickly. Sounds like a body that can burn it off quite well. When... Maybe, but it quickly goes, it's very soon goes back on and I sort of started getting photos of myself at gigs and I thought, oh, I look a bit, I look a bit, uh, a bit, a bit much in this picture. <laughs> I don't carry it well because there's people that carry, you know, really well and I thought, I don't. Oh, I'm thank just, you. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Just anyway, squeezing through tables and like kind of move around. So, dear listener, 
yeah. and viewers. There's no inside secret there. We can't even promote anything. Can no. we? Like, I'm sorry. Oh. We always say goodbye and then there's another 10 minute chat. I just hate goodbyes. So that's the problem. <laughs> just hate, hate I'm goodbyes. sorry. If it must frustrate the hell out of you, because it does frustrate me. The last know, time we were on, questions. I said to you, no, no, didn't She's I? Got yeah. more no. Questions. But you can ask the questions on the next video when he's doing some tricks for yeah. you. Okay. All right. Okay. He's going to be doing some tricks. For me. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to film, film just with the camera close up while he does some tricks for you. Okay. All right. It'd be about half hour, I imagine. Christ, I haven't got that long. All right then. <laughs> Quarter to 12. Okay, we'll just do some 15 minute tricks then. All right, then. It's oh, like he's trying to wrap no, it up. Actually, like like, like, no, what I'll I'll do is I'll tie it onto the end of the podcast then. Tag right, some fit tie footage. On. Why can't we get some live footage? It's not so artificial. Have you not got any? Show real. Well, that, what are you doing? You've got anything coming up like you can come and do? That's the only reason you spoke to me. It's like, that's hello, Simon. I'm the magician that saw you. You came wedding. over to me. <laughs> How can I have your footage can for I, nothing? Yeah, yeah like of course that. you can have my footage for nothing. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, magician. I'll credit you with Cherry Promotions, which isn't yeah. even your business. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll give you, I'll credit you, yeah, Cherry Tree Productions. <laughs> I think I did, didn't I? Well, terrible. I don't know. But yeah, they were, you're all the same. Anyway, yeah. thank you, you everyone, for listening. Thank you for watching. Did you enjoy it? I did have fun. It wasn't today. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, we'll get you back the on. classics. We'll get you back on at some point if you want. Will you? No, I don't know. <laughs> Not for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. You know, I'd love to. Maybe I'll put some. We could. I could put a plan in place and, and try and give some value. And some can we work. have Char Charmaine on? She can come down if you want and to. Promote, yeah. and promote her business. Yeah. And yeah. the other, you're quite good on the mic, and you don't realise you are. So there might be times where I, I'm ill or Rachel's ill. You can stand in and guest host if you want to. I'd love to guest host. <laughs> yeah, could, I could I pick the guest? No. <laughs> you can't pick it because I can't pick when I'm going to be ill, can I? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could, what you could fake a sickie, and then you get like Fair you enough. go. This person's yeah. going to be crap. I'm going to get yeah. into it. I'm going to have a lie in. This is going to be a boring yeah. guest. Oh, we could get Katy Perry on if he knows Katy. Katy Perry. <laughs> no, no, no. no that, and that's the thing, isn't it? When you see people like kids, that you, people used to bring their kid over to the stand. And go, Look at that guy's a Look, do you know Katy Perry? Yeah, You're like, no. Kids are like, yeah, yeah. Do you want him to come? Do you want her to come to the wedding? I'll bring her down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get her to do a couple of numbers, the first dance, Daddy, you know? Hey, yeah. hey, hey, yeah. girl, what are you up to? Go on, yeah, girl. Girl. <laughs> and we're still talking once we said bye again. <laughs> oh, Is it? I'm oh. so sorry. <laughs> right, we're definitely going. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Have some of that. that? It's pumping. That's just me trying to be down with the Can't kids. Got your hands warm? That's because they've been in my crutch <laughs> for two. Right. This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. At snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road Strood. Try the Viking Challenge.